All right, we are live. Welcome to today's Sunday live stream with Plant Based Gabriel, wearing my Nebraska Cornhusker hat because Go Big Red, my alma mater, won yesterday. It wasn't pretty, but they got the job done. Go Huskers. Uh, if your team won, good for them. If they lost, hey, it's week one. Uh, it is college football, so that might be the end of their season. Oh, well. Uh, so here we go. Today we are going to be talking all about calorie density and how you can use the understanding and the knowledge of a simple premise that is, uh, or simple idea that is calorie density, how you can use it to lose weight uh, by following a whole food plant-based vegan diet, a healthy vegan diet, a healthy plant-based, whole food plant-based diet. First of all, if you're tuning in and you can hear me, go ahead. Let me know if you can hear me. Uh, I'd love to hear uh, where we're where you're tuning in from, and uh, if you do root for college football, let's hear who you're rooting for. But today, again, we're going to be talking about calorie density. Uh, I gave a talk not too long ago, well, maybe a, probably two months ago, two, two and a half months ago, I gave a talk about calorie density, how I was able to reasonably eat more food by volume and lose weight uh, while I was doing so. I gave that talk here to a local group in uh, the Richmond area. So I've had some questions. Eileen has been asking about this. And Eileen, I am so sorry. I just got busy with some different things. But today we're going to be talking about it. We're going to be talking about uh, how to lose weight, but understand calorie density. So here we go. To get started, I'm going to jump right in on this. Um, if you have any questions about a visual, if you want to see a visual for something like calorie density, uh, if you're a visual learner, then I would recommend typing in to your, you know, maybe if you have another browser, if you have your phone, you're watching this on your computer, or just wait to do it later. Uh, but just typing in calorie density stomach, okay? Uh, it's very simple. You'll have a couple different uh, pictures that pop up in the images. One of them's from Dr. McDougall, a couple other options. But basically, it just shows you from the lowest calorie density to the highest calorie density what it looks like in your stomach as it's filling up. And as the base base principle, when we talk about calorie density, um, it's going to be coming off from, it's going to be really looking at it from the idea of how are you going to fill up, right? We're, we're human beings. We, we like to fill up. We like to feel full. Uh, we need that uh, satiated uh, feeling to stop eating, right? To be able to push that back. Uh, but how do we do that? By still getting all the nutrients we need, of course, the vitamins, the minerals, uh, the calories we need without overdoing it. And now most people, if you are like myself, uh, maybe you're not like myself, maybe I'm just the outlier, but I grew up in a household of volume eaters, and so it was not uncommon for myself, especially myself and my dad, to go to a buffet with the sole purpose of seeing if we could break their bank account, right? If we could go eat 10 times more food, uh, then we were actually we actually paid for it when we walked into that buffet, right? Which is horrible. It's a it's a horrible premise to live by to eat by. Uh, but I can tell you there was a certain uh, different. Well, well, right now, right now there is the coming out with a endless feast at one of the um, restaurants that has a seafood in it and uh, mm -hmm. starts with a red. We'll just say that. And let's just go ahead and say that we would go, not something I'm necessarily proud of now because of how horrible it was for my body, for his body, uh, but it's funny to look back. We would go to these endless uh, endless uh, shrimp, we'll say that, and we would see who could get the longest bill, right? You pay at the start, but then they keep, you know, they put this, put this receipt that shows how much you've eaten. Well, we would see who could have the longest receipt. Crazy, I know. Uh, but that's how I grew up. That's how many of you grew up in the standard American diet, the standard, Amer standard American way of living, eating, and uh, unfortunately living very sickly in and out of hospitals. So here we go. With that being said, while I was losing weight, I needed to be able to eat food, right? Uh, seeing my mom or uh, my, my parents or you know people I loved growing up that tried to lose weight, the premise was always limit something and don't eat much food limit something and don't eat much food. That was kind of the, you know, tr starve yourself, lose some weight, and then you gain it all back because it's not sustainable to just starve yourself to lose weight, right? We all know you got to have, you know, some sort of calorie deficit, but how can we do it? How could you do it? How did I do it uh, so that I was able to do it su successfully to where I lost 100 pounds? I didn't just hemorrhage away all my muscles or, you know, I, I lost fat. I did it 
uh, gradually over a two year window. I lost 100 pounds at about a pound a week average. And, uh, and now I've kept it off for a couple of years now. And I have not changed my eating habits, right? I, uh, if I work out hard, I might eat a little bit more, but that's not a way to lose weight. The way to lose the weight is really to understand the calorie, um, calorie density, but also just eating the right food. So here we go. Let's talk about calorie density. First of all, to get us a, to give us a, uh, kind of, uh, the, the ruler, the benchmarks of where we're going to be, let's talk about the low-calorie foods first of all. So low-calorie foods are going to be non-starchy vegetables over here. Uh, that includes things like, we'll go with bell peppers, uh, hot peppers, but you're not going to be eating a bulk of a diet from pe hot peppers, uh, peppers, onions, garlic, uh, things like green leafy vegetables, that's a very common one. Green beans, just your vegetables that don't have a big bulk of calories. I'm not saying to build your diet around them. We're just talking about kind of the two ends of the spectrum here. We're going to be somewhere in the middle for the bulk of our uh, diet, but I just want to kind of give a premise here. So we've got non-starchy vegetables. And then on the other side of things, we have things like oil, Okay. Oil is the, the most calorie-dense food. That's why we talk about uh, no oil in a whole food plant-based diet because oil per, okay, let's talk about this here. Let's talk about this. For one pound, which you're never going to eat a pound of oil, there's 4,000 calories, all right? Now I'm getting some stats here. Um, I, one, one really good one is put on by, I think, Jeff Novak is the one that has it out there. Uh, but so we're talking about oil has 4,000 calories per pound. You're never going to eat a pound of it, uh, but that's a lot. Compare to some non starchy vegetables like green leafy vegetables, uh, which have a hundred calories per pound. Now, you're not, you're not going to eat a pound of either of those. Uh, but let's talk about this you are going to eat two tablespoons of oil if you're trying to, you know, if you're using oil. Well, that's 200, over 200 calories of something that's not going to fill you up. You're talking about this much, you know, if you talk about a stomach this wide, this much oil in there, not going to fill you up. It's going to feel gross, uh, but not something you're going to base your diet around. Same thing with, say, like non-starchy vegetables. You're not going to build a diet around those. But where in the middle do we stand? Because we could talk about things like uh, animal products, right? Let's go here. We'll pop one up here uh, with animal products in it. All right. A th about 1,000 calories per pound, okay? You, you know, you, there are people that are doing it, but uh, they're not losing weight, okay? And they're definitely not helping there with long-term success. Um, but then there's also things like legumes at about 500 calories per pound, 600 calories per pound. Uh, that's, you know, that's not something you're going to build a diet around, but that's something we're getting closer. But then we get into what I like to call the simple starchy staples. What are the simple starchy staples, you might ask? And I don't need to look them up here. I'm just uh, pulling this up for I just want to get my next uh, – kind of slide there. Uh, but the simple starchy staples, rice, beans, corn, oats, sweet potatoes, potatoes, quinoa, okay? The simple starchy staples. These are foods, right? Three S's, simple starchy staples. These are the foods that populations, civilizations, healthy, long-lived peoples have built diets around for thousands of years, all right? Whether it's sweet potatoes, whether it's rice, whether it's quinoa, whether it's corn or maize, whether it's uh, teff or uh, we, there's, the, there's a t simple starchy staples are great because there's so many of them. Uh, but how many calories are those? If we talk about the simple starchy staples, we're going to be somewhere around that 400 to 500 calorie range per pound. Well, if you think about per pound, that makes a lot more sense if we're talking about the simple starchy staples. If you're talking about salad greens, of course you could eat six ounces, eight ounces of salad greens. So that's, you know, 50 calories maybe, you don't put a, you know, that's just raw salad greens. Uh, but potatoes, sweet potatoes, corn, quinoa, oats, rice, you know, things like that. You try to eat three pounds of potatoes, you, you're not going to eat for the rest of the day, right? And that would be a big breakfast, a big lunch. Um, so we're going to be eating somewhere around, you know, if you're talking about your uh, simple starchy staples, you're eating those at the base of your meal, you're probably going to eat, whether if it's rice, maybe maybe half a pound or three quarters of a pound or potatoes, you might eat a pound of potatoes, uh, that'd be a good amount of potatoes, but you're around, right? 
500 calories there. Of course, you're going to have some non-starchy vegetables with your meal, something like a green leafy salad with a great oil-free dressing, something about 75 calories. And again, I don't want to uh, I preface this with saying it's not all about, you know, just don't worry about the calories. I want That's what's great about this calorie density and, you know, different scales and charts that you can look at. Uh, but when you, when you think of it as calorie density, you don't have to worry about, oh, this has so many calories. This has, you just eat the foods that are lower in calorie density and you stay away from the ones that are higher. So why does that work? Why are fruits, vegetables, non-starchy vegetables, starchy vegetables, why are those lower in calorie density than say things like, oil, nuts, seeds, avocados, and animal products. And there's two things. Now you might have guessed it. Well, I will tell you right now if you didn't guess it. Those two things are fiber and water. The reason that calorie density works out so well with a whole food plant-based, a healthy vegan diet, one that I've used to lose 100 pounds and many others have used to lose weight, gain, regain their health and uh, just sustain long term, is because of fiber and water. The things that these simple starchy staples, these non-starchy vegetables, starchy vegetables, fruits have in them are rice, or, 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 excuse me, are fiber and water. Now, what fills you up? If we, you know, again, I, I said to look at this, uh, make sure you look at this by the time we're done or once we finish up, but look up calorie density stomach. You look up calorie density stomach, and I've got it right here. You can see what a stomach looks like that's filled up with rice, beans, potatoes, oats, corn, quinoa. It's a full stomach. It's a stomach that's not going to leave you sitting there wanting another, you know, a, you know, wanting a big, big dessert or wanting something more of it. It's going to fill you up. That's just, it's just the way that your body works. Now, some people might need a little bit more, like myself, right? I was trained in the school of hard of gorging yourself on buffet crappy foods. So I might need a little bit more food to fill up, but that's why calorie density is so great because instead of filling up uh, on the foods like say, oil and cheese and meats that are only going to fill up a small portion of your stomach that don't offer any more satiety because the satiety comes from the bulking factor, which is really present in fiber and water, especially once that fibrous uh, material in the water hits your stomach. That's where the real magic happens because it's not it, it's it's not going to bloat you up, but it's going to catch you where you say, oh, okay, you know what? I'm full. No more. I can push away from the table. Put, here, here's something that's really interesting. Um, just as a side note, if you have if you're just beginning a whole food plant based diet, if you're just beginning a vegan healthy vegan diet, and you've come from the standard American diet or where I was, the horrible standard American diet of nothing but. Uh, junk food, animal products, and uh, you know, just gorging yourself. I never knew the feeling of being able to say, "Wow, I'm full. I feel good. I can push my way, push the plate away from the table. I've eaten more than enough. I'm okay." I never knew that feeling because when it came, when it came to eating a standard American diet built around, uh, you know, meat, dairy, pork, fish, uh, oils, things like that, it was always it, there was so you had to eat so much to fill up just because it didn't have the bulking f factors of fiber and water that I never, never, ever, ever, and many of you probably experienced this, I never had the, had the s sensation of saying, wow, I'm full, I can push my food away. It was always, Ugh, wow, I ate enough, I feel sick, no more until next meal, right? Hopefully, hopefully my, hopefully my stomach stops feeling like it's going to explode within the next six hours so I have enough room to eat dinner, right? That was a three-time-a-day affair that would happen. And it's something that, here's the deal. If you're living in a household with people that are eating the standard American diet, uh, I can say this with my dad, who's now eating a healthy, you know, whole food plant-based diet, right? So it's not him. But I remember, I mean, every single day, every single day after dinner, uh, you know, every day if we were having lunch together, you, you, he'd sit down on the couch, his stomach's extended, past to where it was at the start, and he looked like, you know, he looked like he was half in a coma and half, you know, half dying because of how terrible he felt because it took so much of crappy standard American diet food to get him to the point where he felt like he couldn't eat anymore. That is a horrible place to be, but it's a place that many of you, myself included, find ourselves or still find yourself in. So that is where calorie density plays such a big role, such a crucial role. So how do we, you know, how do we use that to lose weight? So it's great. All right, Gabriel, thanks. We know oil has 
200 plus 250 ish calories and two tablespoons, 4,000 calories per pound. We know that's horrible. We're not using oil. We're not cooking with oil. We're not baking with oil. Uh, and we know we're not eating the meats, the cheeses, right? The things that are up there, 1,000 calories uh, uh, per pound, things that are not only not going to help you lose weight, but are also going to help you, uh, right? Going to promote cancer, going to promote type 2 diabetes, going to promote obesity. So things we're going to stick away from anyway. We understand that, Hero. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, but how do we lose weight by eating a plant-based diet, right? We hear from some doctors that we have to eat nuts and seeds. We hear from some doctors that we need to eat a pound of green leafy vegetables a day. We hear from some people that we, you know, we shouldn't eat potatoes. And some people say we should eat potatoes. And some people say white rice. Some people say brown rice. What do we do? All right. <laughs> Let's simplify it. Let's just break it down. Super simple here. This is what I've used to personally lose 100 pounds. This is what I've used to keep the weight off. This is what my dad has used to lose 75 pounds, my mom to lose 70 pounds, my sister to lose 60 pounds, my mother and father-in-law to lose weight, keep it off. Dr. Miller, my wife, to not only lose a little bit of weight because she did need to lose, she needed to lose a little bit of weight, but most importantly, to keep it off and stay at a steady, steady weight, uh, which is where we want to be all long term, right? We want to reach our goal weight and just stay there. We want to eat the right foods. So here it is. We're going to build our diet around the simple starchy staples. Now you've heard me say it a thousand times, but I'll say it again. The simple starchy staples are what you are building your diet around. It's not going to be 100% of what you eat, and it's not going to be just a small amount of what you eat. It's going to be what the bulk of your diet is built around. That might be 75, 85, 95% of your calories coming from the simple starchy staples. Why are they so important? It's because they're so high, right? Here, here's the thing. You could technically eat a diet of nothing but green leafy vegetables, and there are some plant-based uh, people, influencers, you know, even physicians that recommend eating you know, pounds of green leafy vegetables a day. Try to do that for 15 years. I know zero people that have done that long term that have been able to keep weight off, that have been able to successfully eat nothing but green leafy vegetables uh, only long term. Now they're very healthy, you should have them in your diet. We're gonna talk about having them in your diet, but that's not the bulk of your calories. And then there are some that say you should build up a diet based around nuts, seeds, and avocados because of healthy fats. Well, I know zero people. There might be someone out there, maybe an outlier, that have built up the base bulk of their diet long term. I'm not talking about a year or two years. I'm talking about decades that have built the base of their diet around nuts, seeds, avocados, and then added some things in. Not, not happening, right? You can have some nuts, seeds, avocados. We're not going to make it a big portion of this way of eating, but they can be added in in smaller amounts, right? Uh, but... I do know dozens and dozens and dozens, thousands of people for who have for decades eaten a diet built around 85, 90, 95% of their calories coming from the simple starchy staples. Now, what are my favorite simple starchy staples? Mine and Dr. Miller's favorite simple starchy staples that we eat here. Rice, oats, potatoes, sweet potatoes with some corn and quinoa and beans added in. That is the bulk of our calories. That is what we always have cooked. You hear me say it over and over again, but we always have the simple starchy staples ready to go, cooked and ready to go in the refrigerator so that we're never more than 15 minutes away from a warm and ready meal. That might be brown rice mixed with, mixed with some uh, cooked black beans and maybe some sweet corn that we throw some salsa on for a great burrito bowl like we had at the beach yesterday. If you haven't checked that out, check out one of my most recent posts. Uh, it could be brown rice that we just toss in with some frozen veggies. We cook it on the stovetop for a few minutes. A simple meal. Potatoes, sweet potatoes that we cook up. Maybe we'll mash them up, put some baked beans over top, or maybe we'll slice them up and make oil-free fries. Uh, but those are the things that we build our diet around. Now, those are things that I ate as I was losing weight. Those are things that I continue to eat as I'm keeping the weight off. And those are things that populations of people have built their diets around for thousands of years uh, and live long and healthy lives. So that's where the base of our diet's going to be. Now, that's great. So now, where do some of those other things come in? Those plant-based, other plant-based foods, the other whole plant foods. So like green leafy vegetables. I don't have necessarily a, a direct recommendation for green leafy vegetables, but you should eat them. Right, we'll have a salad a day, or we'll have some sort of green leafy vegetable, probably about six to eight ounces per individual a day. 
That's not a lot. That might be a handful or two of kale, a handful or two of spinach, maybe a nice spring mix salad with some arugula in there. You don't have to get crazy with it. And here's the here's a great thing. Uh, you don't have to include those uh, if you don't like them, right? I recommend it because, you know, they're healthy and, uh, and I do enjoy them. I enjoy a good salad. But if you're just getting started and you absolutely hate it, yeah, don't worry about it. Find another way to get some non-starchy vegetables in. Maybe you really like broccoli. Maybe you really like green beans. Two things that you can find very simply in the freezer section if they're not locally available or found fresh at your uh, grocery store market. You can always find those. Brussels sprouts, you know, there's a, there's a ton of these non-starchy vegetables, which are great additions to the diet. Another food or another group of whole plant foods that you want to add into your diet that are also low in calorie density are things like fruits. Now, different doctors and different nutritionists and different uh, people have different recommendations. Uh, we'll just say, you know, Dr. McDougall, as, a, as an example, recommends three servings of fresh fruit a day. What do three servings look like? Well, if you're talking about like bananas, you're going to be think somewhere around one to one and a half bananas, depending on the size of the banana as a serving. A few, you know, three, three or four cups of watermelon, different berries, things like that. Uh, the, the thing is, you're not going to build a diet around those foods. How do I eat my fruit and how do I make sure that I get my uh, my fruit in? Well, just like everything, I don't make sure I do it. Some days I don't eat fruit. Some days I eat fruit. Uh, it's not, I'm not dogmatic about it as long as I'm building my diet and getting all my calories from those simple starchy staples. Uh, but my favorite ways to, you know, indulge in fruit is through ice creams. I think you would know it if you've uh, watched some of my videos before, but ice creams, you know, two or three bananas blended with some plant-based milk, peanut, uh, defatted peanut powder or cocoa powder or some mint extract, you know, different things like that. Turns out amazing. You can have fresh fruit in your oatmeal. You can have fresh fruit in a salad. You can have just some fresh fruit as dessert. That's some great options. So those are some lower in calorie density things. Now, here's here is the big the big question. All right, Gabriel, that's great. But I'm eating a lot of I'm eating a lot of those simple starchy staples. I'm eating my non-starchy vegetables, and I'm eating my you know my fruits. But I'm not losing weight. I'm eating a plant-based diet, but I'm not losing weight. What can I do? Well. There's going to be uh, around three things that we're going to look at. Number one is we're going to make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure that we're not having oil. Because I, I just, just talked to somebody who said, you know, I, uh, I, you know, I'm eating a plant-based diet. I cut out oil. I mean, I didn't change anything else, but I cut out oil and I lost 10 pounds in a few weeks. Just nothing else. No, absolutely nothing else. Just cut out oil. And then they said, I wanted to, you know, I, and, and I felt good, but it was just easier to add it back in. And guess what? Put weight back on. Uh, it's, it's magical that way, uh, but it's real magical in the way of how much you can lose and how easily it is to lose once you cut out the oil. So if, if you're still having some oil, you're drizzling a little oil in there, having an oily dressing, you're, you know, using a little bit of oil here and there, or even if you're using the non-fat spray, which is 100% oil that says fat-free, but it's 100% fat, um, you need to cut it out. You got to cut it out because that is the most concentrated form of calories on the planet that you are going to put in your body is oil. And the fact that there's so many people in the plant-based or the vegan community that are adamant that you need to eat it is insane because you don't. It's not a healthy food group. Absolutely no one should be eating oil of any kind, all right? Now if you're going to have a celebratory meal once a month or you know, okay, go to a vegan restaurant whatever. That's not the base of your diet. You're not doing it every day. You're definitely not doing it three times a day. Uh, oil, not a health food. It's a poison food, really. Uh, and it's keeping you fat, sick, overweight, and healthy. Uh, so cut it out. So what else could be causing it? Well, the second thing that could be causing it is something that I had to focus on while I was losing weight a little bit, uh, and something I think is going to help a lot. Of, it can help a lot of people. And that is, when you think about the simple starchy staples, we think about the whole food ones that I always talk about, rice, bean, corn, potatoes, sweet potatoes, oats, quinoa, um, the whole plant forms of these simple starchy staples. Um, but there's also things that are the little bit more processed form of those simple starchy staples, such as things like breads, bagels, pasta, okay? Um, those are things that you'll see Dr. Miller and myself eating, right? We're eating healthier versions of it that are oil-free whole grain. Um, sometimes we'll have a organic um, 
maybe a gluten-free pasta that's not necessarily a whole grain. We're not building our diet around it. But here's the thing. When we're talking about pasta and breads, which 100% are a part, can be, can be a part. They don't have to be, but they can be a part of a healthy, whole food, plant-based diet. But, but, if you are trying to lose weight, if you are struggling to lose weight, and you've cut out the oil, you're eating just whole plant foods, but you're still having some 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 pasta and bread, and you're noticing that you're not losing weight, um, or that you've plateaued, or you're not losing weight as quick as you'd like, and you're eating a lot of pasta and bread three or four times a week, that is an easy fix. Something that is just, I mean, it's not it's not a life changer because it's not like it's not like oil where it's 100% fat. Because the bulk of these calories do come from good things where you've got fiber and you're going to eat it with water. Uh, but if you're eating a lot of rice or a lot – no, rice is good. I don't want to confuse you better. But if you're eating a lot of pasta and breads, even Ezekiel bread, even whole grain, the most unprocessed pasta around, it's going to be somewhere around 1,000 calories a pound, which is double what corn, potato, sweet potato, oats – rice and beans are going to be at a calorie um, density if you're looking at it from calorie density. So it's about twice as much. And here's something that I've noticed just personally that I have noticed when we're talking about calorie density uh, and especially when it comes to breads and pastas is that I can go, now this might not be for you, but this is definitely for me and I've noticed it for others, is I can go to a table and I can have cooked sweet potatoes and I can eat two sweet potatoes about a pound and a half of, you know, we'll say a pound of sweet potatoes, okay? And I might have something, I might have some steamed broccoli, maybe some salsa, maybe a drizzle of maple syrup, uh, a, a bunch of different options on there. Maybe if I've cooked them really sweet, I'll just put some cinnamon on there. But I'll have that, say, a pound of sweet potatoes, maybe a little bit more, maybe 600 calories of sweet potatoes. Um, but again, full of fiber, full of water, and I am stuffed. Not to the point where I feel sick, but to the point where I say, that is enough. I can't eat anymore. I'm fine. But if we're going to talk about pasta or bread, and it could be a sweet potato pasta or a sweet potato bread, but the thing is it's more processed. It's using a processed form of it. Unfortunately, a lot of the fiber has been taken out, and when you eat it, you're eating a lot less water, even though you are eating some water when you're having it in the pasta form. I have noticed personally uh, that I can go and have three or four bowls of pasta or, or you know, eight pieces of bread, if we're being honest, uh, or a loaf of bread, or maybe Dr. Miller and I share a huge loaf of bread, um, and I can eat that without feeling a thing. I mean, give me another loaf. Throw another loaf at me. That is personally what I've, what I've experienced. Uh, now, at our current healthy body weights, as I've lost 100 pounds, Dr. Miller's gotten to her healthy body weight. We're, we're eating healthy food plant based yet, where we do eat. Uh, whole grain pastas and breads, whole grain oil-free pastas and breads. We do overeat it at times, but the thing is, um, it's not. Key. It's not. We're not putting on weight from it because again, it's oil-free. It is from a whole grain, uh, and so we're just if we're we're overeating on that, we're just having a little bit more calories. We're going to burn those off because it's a clean burning uh, that carbohydrates do if you're going to overeat on them. But the thing is. If I was trying to lose weight, if I was in the, the if I was in the time of my life where I was losing 100 pounds, and I were to eat a loaf of bread, I might not have gained right. I might not have gained weight, and that might be the case. You've plateaued, uh, and you find yourself eating these foods, um, and you're not gaining weight, but you're definitely not losing weight. Uh, just the fact of the matter is, you're just not you're you're eating too high on the calorie density scale. Now, how can you fix it? Well, you could just cut down the bread to once or twice a week or cut it out because it's not something you have to eat. It's something I personally enjoy eating. Dr. Miller personally enjoys eating, but it is something we did not eat at all while I was losing weight. For two years, we, I mean, of course we would have it on occasion, but in general, in our home, as I was eating this way, as I was losing weight, we didn't have bread or pasta in the home. It's just too high in calories as I was losing weight. Now that we've lo I've lost the weight, we're at a healthy body weight, of course we have it two, three times a week. We're not building a diet around it like the simple starchy staples, right? Like rice, bean, corn, potatoes, sweet potatoes, oats, quinoa, okay? Uh, but we are having it, and we do eat it, and you see pictures of it, so it's not something that we're, like, hiding, and it's not something to be ashamed of. But if you do find yourself – but also I will say this. If you are someone uh, who can have two slices of bread – or a nice bowl of pasta with some steamed greens or vegetables and a nice oil-free sauce, and you can fill up and say, that's enough. 
A, that can be a wonderful addition as you're losing weight on a whole food plant-based diet. It can be wonderful, wonderful. But if you're like me, right, a former professional buffet eater, uh, it's impossible for me to not eat a loaf of bread or for me to not boil up a whole box of pasta and eat it, uh, which is a problem if you're trying to lose weight, as many of you probably know and are uh, experiencing firsthand. So that's just something there. It's not an evil food. It's not something you should, ki you know, you should kill out of your diet long term. It's just something that if you're noticing yourself not losing weight or plateauing, uh, just look at the rice or look at the, uh, sorry, look at the pasta and breads and just say, all right, I'll cut it out for a period of time. We'll see how I do. It has nothing to do with the source of grain that it's from or the, you know, the legume it's made out of or, you know, whole grain or, or whole, if it's from wheat or if it's from teff or farine or, you know, it, it just has to do with the calorie density of it. It's about 1,000 calories per pound, double what those simple starchy staples would be. So be careful with it. Now, if you, now here are some other questions, right? Some people see that I use maple syrup in my recipes. Some people say that, uh, you know, they'll see that I'll use, we'll, we'll go with maple syrup because that's, that's kind of one that people see. Cut it out if you don't want it. You don't have to use it. It is higher in calories. Here we go. Maple syrup, about 1,200. We'll say 12 to 1,500 calories per pound. Not something you're going to eat a bulk of. But if you'll notice in my recipes, we're not eating a pound of it. Uh, and it is from a clean burning source of those carbohydrates. It is more sample. Uh, but it's not a fat like the oils or nuts, seeds, avocados. It's something that if you, you know, you, you're, and here's the deal. You use a teaspoon or two of maple syrup or a tablespoon of maple syrup, which would be quite a bit of maple syrup. You're not using a tablespoon per syrup of maple syrup. But if you use a teaspoon of maple syrup, uh, you're talking about 10 calories. It's going to be, you know, you're, we're not eating a bulk. We're not building our diet around it. So if you, if you don't want to eat it, don't eat it. Well, you know, don't, you know, you don't have to attack, you don't attack me for using a teaspoon of maple syrup on my oatmeal or two teaspoons of maple syrup on my oatmeal. All right. Uh, it's just, you, you can, you can uh, go without it if you'd like, or you can add it in. You're not, it's, that's not going to be the, um, whatever that breaks whatever's back. I forget the saying, but you understand what I mean. Uh, let's see here. All right. Uh, someone who is, someone who is, all right. So there was two things, right? So all right, Gabriel, I'm building my diet around the simple starchy staples, rice, beans, corn, potatoes, sweet potatoes, oats, quinoa, and I'm not losing weight. And I'm not also using oil, so that's good. I'm not using oil, and I've cut out the pasta and breads, or I'm living, you know, I'm just having it once or twice a week. It's not, you know, I'm not, or I'm someone who can't, or who's not going to overeat it. All right, great. But I'm not losing weight, and I've plateaued. What should I do? All right, here is the third and biggest one, and now, now, I don't want to ruffle any feathers here, but I've had talks. I've been on different podcasts. I've talked to some different experts on it. And here is something that comes up a ton because, uh, you know, whether you want to hear it or not, and husbands and wives experience this uh, ad you know, crazy amounts. I, I get messages daily from wives and husbands that have this exact question is to say, one of us, whether it's a husband or wife, a partner or partner, and say, I've, I've, we've started eating a plant-based diet now, and I am trying my hardest. I'm focusing in on it, but I'm just not losing the weight. I've plateaued or I'm losing weight very slowly, but my partner is, you know, he's just started it, but he's just losing weight super easy without even a care in the world. What's going on? Well, here is the, uh, here's the paradigm or here, here's how we look at it. And here's, here's normally how it's set up. Um, and I don't come up with the rules or come up with how it works out. This is just how it normally works out. Uh, take it or leave it. It's just it's just what I've seen. And I've talked to many many people about and and uh, and have witnessed myself on many different occasions. Is that men who eat come from a standard American diet, a crappy standard American diet, like myself ate, like my dad ate, like many other people ate. They get on a whole food plant-based diet. You just cut out the oil. You get them eating those whole, those simple starchy staples, some fruit, some vegetables, right? Bread, pasta. The weight just, and this is not for everybody, so don't think it's for everybody, but the weight just whoosh, slides off like nothing. I mean, they're at their perfect body weight in no time. That wasn't necessarily the perfect case for me, right? I gradually lost weight about a pound a week, which is a healthy a healthy amount to lose. You could lose a little bit more. You could lose it less at the amount of time. But over two years, right, I lost 100 pounds. But some guys, it's like they've got 30 pounds to lose, and 30 days later, 
ready to rock and roll. They've lost all the weight. They're healthy, ready to go. Um, but in the same token, you've got the wife or the partner, uh, but normally a lady. Again, I don't come up with the rules here. Uh, who's doing the exact same thing. They're eating the same types of food in the right proportion, right? They're not maybe eating the same bulk, or maybe they are, and they're just, they're not losing the weight. They're having trouble, or they're losing weight much slower than their, their male counterpart. What the heck's the big deal? What's going on? <laughs> Here is what I have witnessed. I don't know exactly what's going. I don't know exactly 100%, but I've talked to many very smart people about this. And here's what we've, here's what I have uh, deciphered through it all is that uh, if you think about uh, women, right, in the, as an overall status, um, if we're talking about survivability, the evolution of staying alive in whatever circumstance, um, you are the, the, the number one most important factor in uh, keeping this species around. And uh, something that you need to hold on to is energy. And energy, as many of you know, as I did, I stored 100 pounds of energy on this frame uh, a while ago. I luckily got it off. Uh, but you're storing that fat, and your body does not want to lose it. It wants you to hold on to it in case a famine comes. Because if a famine comes, if there's no food around, you're going to survive longer if you can just hold on to those 15, 20, 30, 40 pounds of fat uh, that you could just you can keep for later. All right, and I don't come up with the rules. Um, but a man, unfortunately, I what for whatever reason you start eating this healthy way of doing, and it's not everybody can just it, that weight just slides off. Now that's horrible, and I hate that that's the case because some people have much tougher times. I've experienced it in my family. Um, right, my my. Dad was just, he, you know, you start feeding him the right food and he didn't even blink twice before he started losing weight and feeling better, right? Luckily, if even when, even if you're losing weight at a slower pace, like say like my mom, who's, who, who this is the exact case, right? Losing weight at a much slower pace, but feeling so much better, getting the same benefits, it's just the weight's coming off slower. Now, here are some things. Now, I know that probably wasn't great to hear for everybody and I, I don't shoot the messenger. Please don't. That wouldn't be very vegan of you. Um, but here's the deal. If you find yourself in that situation, you're eating a healthy whole food plant-based diet, you're building your diet around the simple starchy staples, rice, beans, potatoes, sweet potatoes, oats, corn, quinoa, you're having fruits and vegetables, you're cut, you cut out all the oil, no oil, you've cut out all the oil, you're cutting out the, the pasta and breads, those just a little bit higher calorie plant foods that are about a thousand calories per pound, a little higher dense calorie, calorie density, um, and you're still not losing weight, you've plateaued, here it is. Now there's some people that have kind of made the formulas or they've you know put in, you need a pound of this and you do, here it is. And Dr. McDougal talks about it in Maximum Weight, his book, the Dr. McDougal's Maximum Weight Loss. Chef AJ talks about it a lot. Uh, many other people talk about it. This is not something brand new. This is just something that could be helpful to you. Um, you're going to build your diet around the simple starchy staples. We're still building our diet around simple starchy staples. Say I have a plate. And regularly, three-fourths of that plate would be the simple starchy staples, right? Rice, bean, corn, potato, sweet potato, oats, quinoa, right? That's what that three-fourths of that plate's going to be. The other one-fourth would be something like green leafy vegetables, uh, salads, non-starchy vegetables like bell peppers, uh, broccoli, uh, green beans, just things like that. Things that are high fiber, high water, but just low, low, low calories, things you're not going to build your diet around. Uh, but if we're someone, here we go, if we're someone who's trying to lose weight, who's tried, you know, we've gone through everything that we've just talked about, um, if you find yourself plateaued or not losing weight or maybe you're just really slow, uh, here we go. We're just going to take another portion of those non, you know, non-starchy vegetables and at the start of our meal, or we're going to eat some more non-starchy vegetables. So maybe that means that five-eighths of your plate are starchy, starchy you know, the simple starchy staples. And the rest is non-starchy vegetables. Here's how I like to do it in the most practical form. I could care less about the volume or weight or a pound of this, half a pound. Here is what you're going to do. Here's what the simplest way about doing it. If you're someone who likes salad, get a bowl that you know is an amount of salad that you can eat easily. Not so much that you're going to fill up where you can't eat anything else. But also not so much where you're going to be like, mm, that's you know, not, you know, that's just a little bit of salad. Get a good sized bowl for salad, 
okay, if you're a salad eater, find a great not or uh, oil-free dressing, a low-fat dressing, and you're going to have that salad that's built around non-starchy vegetables, which are green leafy vegetables, okay? And we're going to have that before lunch and dinner. We're going to have two salads a day. Many of you are already doing it. Uh, but here's how I like to do it. I like to do it before the meal for the sole fact that I don't like to calculate anything. I like to just to, to put my trust in the calorie density. So here we go. I'm going to have a six ounce, you know, we'll just say six ounces of green leafy vegetables, six, eight ounces. I don't know. Go crazy. Seven, 10 ounces of uh, green leafy vegetables. I'm going to have that salad at the start of my meal. I'm going to eat that salad, which is Low in calorie density, but very high in fiber and water. Now, what does that do? That's going to help fill me up a little bit. It's going to fill that stomach up a little bit with that fiber and water. And so, so when I move to my main meal that's built around the simple starchy staples, the rice, bean, corns, potatoes, sweet potato, oats, corn, quinoa. Okay, I said corn twice. Uh, but when I move to that, I'm already going to be a little bit full. Not so much that I can't eat anything, and so that I, you know, cut calories so severe that I'm, you know, hemorrhaging my, you know, hemorrhaging muscles, and I'm just, you know, wasting away. No, just so much so that I can eat a good amount of those simple starchy staples, those non or those starchy vegetables, and then I can, you know, fill up, push away. Because normally, I think that I find the biggest problem is with people who not necessarily overeat a ton, but you just fill up exactly the perfect amount on those simple starchy staples, those rice, beans, corn, potatoes, sweet potatoes, oats. And then, you know, you don't lose any weight because you're at your perfect amount. You're not gaining weight, but you're not losing weight. You've plateaued. So here you go. You just add in some non-starchy vegetables at the start of your meal. And I like it at dinner and I like it at, I like it at lunch and I like it at dinner because I don't find that many people overeat at breakfast. Many of you have a tough time even eating breakfast because it's tough to, you know, you get up, you know, you're kind of like, uh, and then you eat something. It's tough to overeat at breakfast. If you're a breakfast overeater, yeah, find a non-starchy vegetable to, you know, throw on your plate before so. But lunch and dinner, I really like that. And it's worked great for me. I know when I, if I plateaued or if I was just not, you know, and I felt like, uh, all right, I'm just, you know, I'm not gaining weight. I Through those, through those two years, there was never a point in time where I consistently started gaining weight. Uh, but there was points in time where I would plateau or, I would, you know, the weight loss would slow down a little bit. Uh, so I would, hey, I would add in a salad before my lunch and dinner and I just, you know, start, you know, it just, it would just mean I eat a little bit less of those simple starchy staples, which, hello people, when you reach your perfect body weight, as many of you understand this and what Dr. Miller, my wife, has found to be so, so great and myself finding it so great is that once you reach your perfect body weight, what your body should have been. Mine was 100 pounds less than where I was at walking around after I broke my back and my college football career ended. But once you reach that perfect body weight and you build your diet around those simple starchy staples, you'll find that you eat the perfect amount of calories. You don't start fluctuating weight up, down, up, down, up, down, five pounds up, four pounds down, five pounds up, two pounds down, right? And no, you eat the perfect amount of food, you stay the same with reason, and you fill up on the foods that you enjoy eating, the rice, beans, corn, potatoes, sweet potato, oats, right? And you just stay the same. I've experienced that for years now, okay? That's what Dr. Miller's experienced as she's lost the weight. She lost weight, and she just eats as much as she wants. Because she fills up because the food that she's eating is lower in calorie density, right? It's around that four to 500 calorie a pound range. She's eating the rice, the beans, the potatoes, sweet potatoes, oats, quinoa, corn. And she's not overeating. She's pushing away and she's able to stay the same weight. And it's that's the magic of it. But if we're someone who's plateaued, adding in those non-starchy vegetables at the start can be a huge help, especially, 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 um, and I don't come up with the rules, but if you're a lady out there who's maybe your husband has got on this way of eating and he's just whew, lost the weight quickly, this is something that can help you a ton and can drastically um, just help you. It's not a huge change either. It's just a simple little thing. Um, but here's the deal. Maybe you're not a salad eater. Maybe you say, Gabriel, I can't eat a salad. Green leafy vegetables are my kryptonite. And I was right there. I'm someone who, once I started growing my own food, I started to enjoy those green leafy vegetables a lot more, and now I love to eat them. Uh, but maybe you're, you know, the, but here's, okay, so here's the question. All right, you're telling me to eat a salad, to, you know, how I've plateaued, I'm not losing weight as much. But I hate salad, I can't eat it. it. It comes up as soon as it goes down. It just can't keep it down. 
Uh, well, here's the deal. You don't have to eat the salad. That's a great thing. You don't have to eat the kale, the spinach, the chard, the salad, you know, the spring mix, the arugula, uh, all those wonderful things. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but here's what you can eat. You can eat the non-starchy vegetables, the broccoli, the green beans, the bell peppers, the carrots, okay? Uh, I'm just naming a few there. There's tons and tons and tons of them. Uh, the green, sna the snap green peas, the, you know, here's my favorites. As I was getting started and as before I was, you know, big into the salad, there was a couple things that I really enjoyed. I'll just tell you them. I'm not prescribing them to anybody. I'm not saying you have to do this. I'm just saying this might be helpful to you. And here it is. As I was losing weight, if I plateaued or I noticed my weight was not coming off, you know, and I was eating the simple starchy staples, I was eating fruits, I was eating my vegetables, I didn't have any oil, I really cut down or cut out the pasta and breads, uh, but I was plateauing, I was eating the perfect amount of calories at the time, but I still had weight to lose, so I needed to eat lower calorie density. Here's what I did. We went to the store, and I loaded my freezer up with frozen vegetables. Now, what frozen vegetables did I load my freezer up with? I loaded it up with broccoli and green beans. So that I could pull a bag out, 12 to 16 ounce bag, maybe one and a half bags or two bags if I was making dinner for Dr. Miller and myself. I would pull it out of the freezer. If it was a microwave bag, at the time we had a microwave, I might throw it in the microwave. I might throw it on the skillet with some vegetable broth to cook it up. I might put it in my steamer basket. There's a thousand, I might put it in the oven for a few minutes. There's a thousand things you can do with it. And then... I would put some no salt seasoning or maybe a little bit of salt on there. I might get a little crazy. I'd throw it on there and I would eat, you know, six, eight, 10, 12 ounces of those non starchy vegetables in the form of broccoli, Brussels sprouts, uh, uh, snap peas, uh, you know, green beans, things like that. You just find the ones that you like. Um, and so, I find that I did that. I ate that amount. I enjoyed it. I love green beans. I love, love, love green beans. I like them a little bit overcooked and then some no salt seasoning, maybe a little bit of salt on there. Absolutely fantastic. I put some of that on there. I would eat it. I have a bowl of it. And then I would move to my, you know, my cooked sweet potato, my cooked brown rice, my, my corn, my quinoa, my oats. Uh, or, and here, you know, I might throw it in there with it. Now, that is something that you can do. I like to have it a little bit before, so you fill up a little bit, especially if you're someone who's having a big problem with it, uh, with potentially just eating, you know, overeating or having a little, you know, having the perfect amount. But I did that, and that was perfect. Now, as I moved towards the, you know, this, you know, starting to enjoy salads, I, of course, started having the salads, and I enjoyed that too. Um, but the great thing is, these are all just, you know, they're all healthy things. You're not, you know, one thing that I hear a lot of people, well, I've got a buddy who's doing this diet where he eats bacon and eggs and, you know, he doesn't know, you know, he's losing weight. He's, you know, well, okay. Talk to me in 10 years when he's got clogged arteries, he's got dementia and, uh, you know, he's dealing with every other chronic disease that every other person who's basing their diet, right? It's no different than the standard American diet who's basing their diet around the, you know, the bacon, eggs, milk, meat, dairy. Uh, it's just, you're just eating all of it. Okay, maybe you lose a little bit of weight. Uh, but talk to me when you're dealing with the same problems that those foods uh, present. So the great thing about this, uh, the whole food plant-based, a healthy vegan, a healthy plant-based diet is that the little things that we might do to change as we're losing the weight are healthy things long-term anyways. Having a salad before lunch and dinner is not detrimental to your health. Building your diet around the simple starchy staples, the rice, beans, corn, potatoes, sweet potatoes, oats, quinoa, is not detrimental to your health. Tell that to the thousands and thousands of people in populations, the millions of people in populations that have lived for thousands of years building their diets around that, living well into their 90s and 100s, healthy, not in and out of hospitals, uh, fighting disease, chronic diseases and dementia. No, these are healthy individuals that are working into, you know, working fun labor, you know, filled jobs, farming. I, I love it. Uh, hopefully I'm in my 90s uh, and I'm farming still. Uh, but, but here's the deal. Let's get back to the simple premise. I hope that helped. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I really hope that helped. If you have any further questions on it, shoot me a message or comment here. I can I will pop on and answer questions, and then also if you have any questions or if someone else uh, wants to pop in and add their two cents, go ahead. We got all the sense we need right here, hopefully. Um, but here we go. Let's just talk about it. Let's just go over the basics again. 
calorie density. If we're looking at the lowest calorie foods, we're going to be non-starchy vegetables like green feed vegetables, green beans, broccoli, green leafy vegetables. I already said, you know, kale, kale, chard, arugula, salad mixes, things like that. And we're going to talk about fruits that are going to be, you know, uh, 200 calories a pound. You know, there's different fruits that have different calories, but very low calorie things like which. But those two things are great as we're eating a plant-based diet, a whole food plant-based diet. But that's not what we're going to build our diet around. We're not going to, you know, have the base of our diet be those non-starchy vegetables and fruits. No, the base of our diet is going to be perfectly set in there with foods that are full of fiber, full of water, and have a perfect amount of calories so that those three things work together to fill you up without filling you out so that you can lose weight, keep it off long term, and live a long and healthy life. So those things are the simple starchy staples. I've said it 30 times today. I probably have, but the corn, potatoes, sweet potatoes, oats, quinoa, rice. I missed one. I might have missed one. Um, those are the foods, 500 calories a pound. That is the perfect calorie density there. You eat a pound or a pound and a half of those, a meal, you're going to be 1,500 calories a day if you're eating the fruits and the vegetables right. We're going to be right there perfectly. Now, if you're someone who's having trouble losing weight, right? Okay, so those are, that's where we want to be. Where do we want to really stay away from is the other end of the spectrum. I'm looking at it. All right, that is... Oil being first and foremost the worst thing you could put into your body, especially if you're someone trying to lose weight, especially if you're someone trying to reverse chronic diseases, regain your health. Oil is 4,000 calories per pound, and I know you're not going to eat a pound of oil, uh, but here's the deal. 200, close to 250 calories per two tablespoons. Now, you might be someone that says, well, I would never use two tablespoons of oil, and I was someone who said, I would never use two tablespoons of oil when I'm cooking, but here's the deal. How many times you get that tablespoon measure out when you're drizzling your vegetables on the stove top with oil or drizzling your vegetables you're about to roast with oil? You don't. You get that bottle out and you go glug, 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 glug. Well, that might have been a teaspoon. Glug, 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 glug. That might have been another teaspoon. Okay, there was three tablespoons, ladies and gentlemen. Three, right? You're going to over it. Stay away from it. Cut it out. It's not helping you out in any way. You can use parchment paper when baking. You can use fruit purees when you're making uh, sweet dishes, baked dishes. You can use vegetable purees when you're making savory baked dishes. You can use vegetable broth or water when you're uh, cooking on the stove top. You don't need the oil. Cut it out. It's, it's horrible for you. All right. Things that are still higher in fat uh, that are also high in animal protein, which as Dr. T. Colin Campbell has presented, as many plant-based doctors have done, and you can find it all out there. Uh, and if you want me to send you a direct link, I can. Uh, we're talking about the meat, the milk, the eggs, the fish, high animal protein, high animal fat, high chance that you are going to die prematurely of the chronic diseases that are plaguing the standard and developed world, things like type 2 diabetes, things like cancer, things like obesity, uh, things that things like dementia, things that you don't want to deal with, things that your parents, your grandparents have dealt with and are dealing with. And guess what? You're dealing with it. I'm having a child here pretty soon. One thing I sure as heck don't want to put on the next generation is me being fat, sick, and in and out of hospitals because I'm choosing to put the wrong thing on my plate three times a day. You have the choice, ladies and gentlemen. Three times a day, maybe four times if you're feeling really hungry and you want to have a snacky. Uh, three or four times, you have a choice whether you're going to live long and healthy, staying out of hospitals, out of you know, not needing the care of your loved ones who you'd rather be out enjoying nature with, enjoying their company instead of needing them to care for you and take care of you. Okay, right? Here's the deal: you choose. It's your choice. Uh, and I've, I've heard other people say it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it here. I hear many people you know, say this, Look, you know, who, who see people eating a plant-based diet. They see people eating a whole food plant-based diet. They see people eating a healthy vegan diet. And they say, well, don't you ever feel like cheating? Don't you ever feel like just having a little rib or feeling like having a little piece of fish or chicken or have an egg or two or maybe a glass of cow milk? Um, and here's the thing. They say, don't you want to cheat a little bit? Don't you ever feel like cheating a little bit? Now, if you're an ethic, if you're coming in from this from an ethical standpoint, you would say no because you know I'm not doing it. I'm not going to exploit animals. But if you're coming from it from the health point of view, here's the deal. Let me ask you guys: Who are you cheating 
if you cheat on a healthy whole food plant-based diet, are you cheating on your wife? Are you cheating on your kids? Are you cheating on the next generation if you have a little piece of fish or an egg or a bit of milk? or Who are you cheating? You're cheating one person. One person, and that is the person that you look at when you're staring in the mirror. That is the person that you are feeding three times a day. That's the person that's either going to be in and out of hospitals dealing with chronic diseases that are plaguing the modern world, or that is the very same person that's not going to choose to cheat on a healthy plant-based diet. Someone that's going to build their diet around simple starchy staples, that's going to eat the non-starchy vegetables, the green leafy vegetables, the fruits. Someone that's going to live a long, healthy life, disease-free, that will have problems because we are human beings, but someone who's not going to be dependent on the medical system, on their loved ones, to keep them around, hooked up to machines. No. My goal is, and hopefully that's the same goal as you, that I can live a long and healthy life, one that I can do a lot of good for others, one that I can help the people I care about most, but really importantly, really, really importantly, one where I feel great, one that I feel like you know I can go outside, I can take a walk, I can go on a bike ride, I can go on a hike, I don't have to worry that I'm 100 pounds overweight like I was. I don't have to worry about being out of breath like I was. I don't have to worry about having diabetes and worrying about, you know, my blood sugars and, you know, what's happening, you know, like I was, all right? I, I don't, you, we don't want to deal with that. What we're, what we're aiming for and what I hope you're aiming for is a long and healthy life. And it's simple. I, you know, you don't need to get crazy, you know, crazy, uh, you know, sophisticated when we're talking about calorie density or losing weight on a plant-based diet. I Hopefully I laid it out. I really, really hope I laid it out for you guys. Um, you know, we're building our diet around the simple starchy staples. And it makes it really, really easy if we have those simple starchy staples around at all times so they're the easiest thing for us to eat so that we don't go and choose something that's bad for us, something that's not compliant, something that's not good for our health, right? That's why I always keep those simple starchy staples cooked and ready to go in our refrigerator. We've got brown rice cooked and in a refrigerator safe container as we speak in my fridge. I've got cooked sweet potatoes and potatoes, baked sweet potatoes and potatoes in my fridge as we speak that I could cook and warm up in five minutes or 10 minutes on the stove top or cook, warm up in the oven. If you got a microwave in 30 seconds or 60 seconds, I've got those cooked. I've got cooked pinto beans in my refrigerator right now that are ready to go anytime I need them. That is how you make it super simple uh, and super easy. Super simple, super easy. I hope that was helpful, everybody. Let's see here. Uh, let's see what questions we might have. I'm going to pop on the questions. He said, low-fat dressing, don't most have oil? All right, Jennifer, yes. So we're going to talk about this. Uh, when you think about dressings that are high, you know, are like, so of course, most dressings aren't whole food plant-based and aren't, you know, plant-based. Vegan and standard American dressings are high in fat, high in oil, and take a perfectly healthy salad and make it something, that's one thing that most people, I, you know, I get this question a lot. Um, and, and, and so we're going to get into the question section, everybody. Um, if you, if you got to tune out, that's okay. I'm going to answer these questions. I finished my talk on calorie density. I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to answer questions here for probably 20, 30 minutes. Uh, we'll see how many we can get to. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but if you have to tune out now, hey, if you haven't heard already, I love you. I really hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Have a wonderful Labor Day if you're here in the States. Um, and just just – you, here's the deal. There's two ways that we can, you know, the two biggest ways that I believe that we can change the world around us, that we can create a healthy world around us, one that's not going to burn up and be polluted for future generations, and that is with love and leadership. Number one, number one, you've got to lead the people around you. If you are out telling people how great, I had a talk with someone recently about someone who isn't even eating a plant-based diet, but talks about it, you know, you know, overweight, not healthy, but talks about a plant-based diet. If you're not, and that, and it's not someone who's on the journey to health and losing weight, right? It's someone who just talks about it, has never done it. If you want to change the people around you, you want to make an impact on the people you love most in this world, 
whether that's your husband, your wife, your kids, your grandchildren, your best friends, your family, your cousins, I don't care who it is, your coworkers, you've got to lead by example. You've got to show them the, the, the glowing complexion that a plant-based, that a healthy vegan, a healthy whole food plant-based diet will give you. You've got to show them that slim, trim figure that a healthy whole food plant-based diet can give you. You've got to show them and lead with the energy that a healthy whole food plant-based diet, and I'm not energetic, am I, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, but you've got to show them what that can present, you know, what that looks like. And if you're talking about eating a healthy whole food plant-based diet, but then you're just eating a bunch of junk vegan foods or eating animal products or eat it, fill, you know, cooking with all the oil and you're not glowing and you're not losing weight, you're not feeling better and you're not moving around being healthier, then you are not doing a service to anybody. So number one, you got to lead. You got to lead. You got to, you got to, you got to, you know, you want to talk the talk, you better walk the walk on a whole food plant-based diet. Number two, you got to love the people around you. You start eating this way, you start feeling better. You know, once you start eating this way and you start feeling better, you want everybody that you care about to start eating this way and to start feeling better because then you notice, oh my gosh, grandpa's on every single diabetes and obesity and uh, he's dealing with all these medications and all the side effects and if he would just eat this way, everything would be better. Or, or you know, little Debbie is, you know, already dealing with obesity. Little Johnny already dealing with obesity. If he would just eat this way, He's already doing better. Well, number one, walk the walk. Walk the walk. You eat a healthy whole food plant-based diet. You do it long-term, they'll start to notice. But second, you got to love them. Nobody, nobody takes, you know, nobody accepts anything from anyone, advice, if they don't know that you generally care about them. So don't go out trying to change the world first. Don't go out trying to change, you know, the coworker you hate that you just think could deal with, you know, no, change the people that you care about most. You've got to love the people around you, those people you love most in this world. You can have the m biggest impact on any of them, right? Love and leadership. Everybody, if you have to head out, that's fine. We're going to answer some questions. If you haven't heard already, I love you. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Let's get to some questions. All right, to get back to the question about um, the salad dressing, of course, standard American dressings and uh, just standard vegan dressings are going to have a ton of oil. They're going to have a ton of fat. Some of them have eggs in them, and you know, they're going to be terrible for you. They're going to be high salt, high sugar. That's why we got to look for the healthy whole food plant-based options. I normally send people to ForksOverKnives.com and type in dressing, and there's a ton of different salad dressings there. If you don't want to do that, hey, Rose, I'm noticing you right now. I'm noticing you right now. Um, but if you don't want to um, you know, go there, here's some great options. Balsamic vinegars. You can get a standard balsamic vinegar to throw on salad. You can get a white balsamic vinegar. You can get a balsamic vinegar reduction. Normally in the same aisle in most standard grocery stores, like Walmart and Kroger, uh, which hopefully most of you have at your disposal, or your, you know, your more high-end markets if you'd like, uh, those things go great. Now, if you don't love the acid, you, you know, it's too much, you can't stand, you know, the vinegars. Uh, well, one, I would say start adding a little bit because you kind of get used to it and you start to enjoy it. Uh, but then, you know, second, just use fruit. You can blend up fruit, strawberries, peaches, apricots, uh, and you just blend them up. You might use a little splash of water in there. Maybe throw a little, if you want it to be a little savory, throw a little garlic, you know, garlic powder in there. And you've got a wonderful dressing. And then you come up with your favorite dressing. Or here's another one. You know, I'm just throwing out some examples there. You, you, know, you can look up oil-free dressings, healthy oil-free dressings or vegan oil-free dressings. You'll find thousands of them. you find a couple you like. Here's one that I really like. Here's one that I know tons and tons of people like, mostly because we're kind of in the same um, groups, so we, we kind of enjoy it. You know, Dr. Esselstyn, Jane Esselstyn, Ann Esselstyn's talked about the three, two, one dressing. I know my mother-in-law loves this dressing. Three, two, one dressing. If you know it, you know it, but here it is. It's just three tablespoons of, well, I think it's, I can't remember, three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, two tablespoons of mustard, one tablespoon of uh, maple syrup. So it kind of hits that salty from the mustard, sweet from the maple syrup, and kind of the acid that you get from the balsamic. Uh, that's wonderful. That goes great on salads, but here's, uh, I like to do like three tablespoons of maple syrup, two tablespoons of balsamic, and one tablespoon of mustard. 
that works great. And that's going to, and you can water it down if you want. If you find that that's too strong, water it down. That'll make, you know, be a couple salads worth. So you're not, you know, just putting that on one salad, of course. Um, but that works great. You find what you like. I really just like throwing on some balsamic vinegar or balsamic glaze, pop it on, maybe toss in a little barbecue sauce or you, know, you just get creative. But here is, <clears throat> here is the key to it. And many people don't understand this. I hear this all the time. I've got to eat my salad. And I don't like any dressing that's not that doesn't have oil in it. Well, here we go, everybody. Number one, you don't have to eat your salad because salad is not going to be what makes or breaks you on a healthy, whole food, plant-based diet. It's going to be building your diet around those simple starchy staples. Of course, it helps, and of course, it's healthy, and of course, it's a wonderful addition to a healthy, whole food, plant-based diet. But if the only way, the only way that you can eat salad is by throwing on a high-fat, horrible, oil-filled dressing then just cut the salad out. Cut it out. Cut it out until you can find another dressing that you enjoy just as much or better. Cut it out. Cut it out. You're not going to notice your health deteriorate. Uh, you're going to notice your health improve because guess what? That 50 calorie salad, we're talking about calorie density today, that 50, 50 calorie salad that you would normally eat if you had a great fruit-based dressing, you've got a great arugula and spring mix salad, you throw on some, uh, you know, a fruit-based dressing, 50 75 calories there. It's wonderful. It's going to fill you up a little bit. It's going to be tasty. You throw on two tablespoons an oil-filled dressing. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Here's a 300-calorie salad or a 250-calorie salad that's three-fourths fat, okay? No, that's not the way to go. You find you, you cut out the salad. You can only eat it with oil. You cut it out. You find a dressing you like better, if not the same. Uh, until then, find something else. I hope that helps. All right, let's see here. Um, uh, looks like maybe someone was, hey, Rose and Joey, Rose and Joey, hey, hey, hey. Um, it looks, I'm trying to get back to the majority of comments here. It's not letting me get up there all the way, but it looks like some people are asking maybe who Dr. Miller was. Dr. Miller is my wife, uh, my beautiful wife. If you want to see a picture of her most, of a picture of us recently, yesterday at the beach, beach day, um, you can see that we're out there with my mother and father-in-law. Had a wonderful time. Uh, yes, Dr. Miller, she's a mathematics professor, and uh, I love of my life. And also a great master for healthy, whole food, plant-based diet. Someone who knows and understands this way of eating better than almost anybody that I know. I mean, she's got a wealth of knowledge. So I'm glad to have her as my partner in uh, whole food, plant-based crime. Uh, let's see here. Uh, he's trying to teach us. That shout out. <laughs> oh, I guess it's okay. I'll shout out people. That's fine. Uh, Rose, yes. Uh, God, okay, let's see here. Uh, let's see. If you don't like salad, you say, if you don't like salads, could you say saute or steam the leafy veg and get the same result? Yes. So that's something I didn't, I didn't mention. Another great way to add in those non-starchy vegetables, if you're someone who's kind of plateauing and you just find that you're maybe eating the perfect amount of calories, but which is causing you to stay the same, but you still have some weight to lose, you still have some fat to lose, uh, salads are a great way to go. You know, a great salad at the start of your meal can help fill you up a little bit so that you can eat those non-starchy vegetables, those wonderful non-starchy vegetables, without overeating or eating, you know, just enough calories so that you can just create a little bit of a deficit because we're talking about calorie density today. So yes. Um, a salad's great, but you can take those the same greens, and normally we're talking about brassicas in this case, which are things like kale, collards, chard, and you can take that same amount that you would normally have in a salad, which is going to have a little bit of bitterness, and if you don't love the flavor, you don't love the flavor, that's fine. I'm more of a spring mix fan myself with things like spinach and sal baby salad greens, um, lettuce greens, excuse me, but you take that kale, you take the collards, you take the chard, you throw it in a steamer basket. You throw it in a you know steamer thing for a microwave, or I forget how you do that, but uh, you know simple to do. Or you blanch it in some boiling water real quick. You pull it out. It's taken all the bitterness out. It's sweetened it a bit, uh, and you could just top on some balsamic vinegar. You could eat it at it as is. You could throw on some hot sauce. That's another great option. Thank you for throwing that in there, Caitlin. A, a wonderful, a wonderful addition there. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um. If we want to stay from if we want to stray from oil, what do you use to make sure nothing sticks to a pan? I did mention that a little. This has probably happened a while ago, but let's say here, uh, parchment paper is a great is a great option. I love parchment paper. Now, if you're someone who says, "Well, parchment paper is not a zero waste product," and you're right, it isn't. 
Um, but you're not as, you know, I, we love parchment paper. It's a great option, but there's another option, and it's called a silicon baking mat, which is also nonstick. Parchment paper works a little bit better because I find it's nonstick even more. Uh, that's, that's what I recommend there. That's what I recommend there. All right, Gil has a question. Gil, go big red, buddy. Go big red. Curious about your recommendations on timing of day for starchy staples. Is it bad to eat lots of starch for dinner and then head off to bed a few hours later? I also did not hear you mention or talk about this particular consumption of nuts and seeds. I like to eat pistachios or almonds quite often. I'm wondering if this, along with peanut butter, is sabotaging me. What do you eat for snacks between meals? Also, what are your thoughts on losing weight this way to with in concert with exercise hate running but can do treadmill other cardio weightlifting all right gil hey gil can you give me some better questions i'm just kidding those are fantastic thank you Gil. No, those are those are perfect because that's that's those are things that i should have covered today that i'm going to cover right now gil let me grab a drink of water and think about it. that's perfect man perfect all right the first one timing of starches Here's my timing of starches, the simple starchy staples, what I build my diet around, what I lost 100 pounds with, what I've continued to lose weight with, what people and populations have eaten and lived healthfully long lives with as the base of their diet for thousands of years. Uh, well, I like to eat it in the morning, afternoon, at night. I don't get complicated with it, Gil. Here's the deal. You eat when you eat. It's not so much, you know, I'm not going to try to cram in as much food before bed, of course. I'm going to eat to, you know, I'm going to fill up on those foods. I'm going to feel great. That's not the problem. Now, when we talk about the nuts, seeds, avocados, those high-fat plant foods, which are not, you know, they're not as bad as oil, but guess what, ladies and gentlemen? They're pretty much all fat. They've got some fiber, maybe a little bit of moisture in there from water. They're high-fat. You, Gil, you said you like to snack on nuts, you know, the nuts, seeds. Um, yeah, that's sabotaging you. If you're someone who's trying to lose weight, you know, a lot of doctors have different recommendations, like an ounce of nuts a day, which is uh, a little bit, which will fill up a little section on your hand. I don't even, you know, most doctors recommend that long term if you want, you know, you want to have some. If you're trying to lose weight, cut out the nuts, seeds, avocados that you would eat. You know, they, they're not snacking foods. Nuts, seeds, avocados, you'll see them in some of my recipes, but you'll see them in the portion or in, in addition to make a recipe, like a nut milk, where I'm using a fourth of a cup of soaked cashews to make eight to 10 to 12 cups of water, eight cups of water, we'll say, you're gonna use that eight cups of water over four to seven days throughout the week. That's, that's about right. That's about a third of an ounce a day if you think about the nuts that were in there. Um, you, you shouldn't be snacking on those, Gil, if you're trying to lose weight, and you shouldn't be snacking on nut seeds if you're trying to maintain your weight because those higher fat foods don't get utilized the same as those high carbohydrate, low fat, healthy whole plant foods like the rice, beans, corn, potatoes, sweet potato, oats, quinoa, those simple starchy staples that are high carbohydrate, high fiber, high water, low fat. Those are what you should be snacking on. Those are what you should be building your building your diet around. So yes, I would um, I would 100% say uh, that if you are having trouble, if you feel like something's sabotaging your diet, it's definitely not the timing that you're eating your simple starchy staples. I mean, all right, if you're eating five pounds of potatoes right before bed, I probably wouldn't do that. But you know, we're, that's not what you're talking about here. Um, but if you're having, if you're like my dad was, and you're having a little a, a little snack of nuts before bed, and a little snack turns into handful, 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 handful. I just ate three cups of nuts. Two cups of nuts, even a cup of nuts before bed, yeah, that'll sabotage you real quickly, uh, real, real quickly, because I have not known one person who can snack on nuts and finish an ounce. I know every person can snack on nuts and eat six ounces, okay, real quick. High fat, you want to stay away from that. Um, eat in limited, limited quantity, very low. Um, all right, uh, exercise. So as I was losing 100 pounds, Gil, I was unable to exercise. I had broken my back, as you know, as many of you know. Uh, I had to end my college football career, go Huskers. Uh, but I had 100 pounds to lose, and all I knew was exercise. And I've done many videos about this. It's something I've talked about extensively. Uh, but here's the deal. I wasn't able to exercise. I had to find another way to lose weight. 
And how did I do it? I did it through understanding the calorie density, understanding that if I cut out the oil, if I cut out the nut seeds, avocados, if I cut out the animal products, anything that had a mother or a face, okay, if I cut that out and I focused on those simple starchy staples, the rice, beans, potatoes, corn, quinoa, oats, and if I focused on those and I focused on having some non-starchy vegetables, some green leafy greens, some green leafies, uh, you know, broccoli, some green beans, things like that, and fruit, if I focused on that, I was able to lose the weight, keep it off now. Um, and yes, so I exercise now, uh, but would I have exercised if I was able to exercise for the while I was losing the bulk of my 100 pounds? Um, I probably would have somewhat, but here's the deal. Here's what I would recommend exercising-wise. You said you hate running. Well, good. I do not recommend that anybody begin or start up a running routine or a high intensity cardio routine as they're losing weight. Because here's what I have found in many, 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 many cases, is that if you're trying to lose weight, you get on a healthy whole food plant-based diet, you get on whatever diet you're gonna get on, or whatever way of eating, and you begin high intensity exercise, what happens is you go to the gym, you start running, you burn 600 calories, but once you're done running, or once you're done with that high, extensive high energy exercise, high intensity exercise, you come home after burning 600 calories and you eat 1200 because you're just, oh, I'm so tired and hungry and tired and hungry and tired and hungry. I need to eat, 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 eat. And you lose that point of homeostasis where you can say, all right, I've reached the point of satiety. Same thing for, you know, running, jogging, uh, you know, you, you do any of these high, you know, elliptical, you do any of these high intensity biking, you do any of these high intensity uh, cardio style exercises, which are great long term, it's great for heart health, it's great for building up strength, I mean they're great things, but if you're trying to lose weight, I would I would stick away from it because I find that whether you go to the gym and you run and you, burn, and you run or you get on the elliptical and you burn 300 calories or 500, you come home and you eat seven or 800 uh, just to feel normal after that exercise, not the way you wanna go if you're trying to lose weight. Uh, so, so that is the kind of the, it's funny. It's like the, it's the rat race or the, the hamster wheel that people get on. I'm exercise, 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 come home, eat, 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 exercise, 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 eat, 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 and guess what? You're the same way. The wheels turn, but you're the same exact way. So I stick away from that. But here are my recommendations for someone who's trying to lose weight. You're on a healthy whole food plant-based diet and you're someone who, you know, wants to exercise because exercise is healthy. I was unable to do it. Majorly, right, because I broke my back, relearned to walk. I wasn't running anywhere soon. Um, but if you do have the ability to work out, here's what I recommend. Low-intensity exercises, something like walking on a treadmill, walking around a track. That's really the best. That's that's my best. You know, that's my big advice. Do you get on and you walk at, right, you said walking, say, 3.5 miles per hour. Yeah, you go from three to four on there, two to five, two to four mile per hour on there, and you do that for 30 to 60 minutes a day. Here's what I find. If you are on a treadmill, you're walking 3.5 miles per hour is a great example. It's a very easy thing to do. You're not going to, you know, you're not breaking a sweat. You're not breathing heavy. You're just moving. You're going to probably burn, you know, and we talk, you know, calorie, you know, you're probably going to burn yeah, 200, 250 calories. You do it for an hour. You do it for 40 minutes, you burn 200 calories. May not seem like a lot when you could run and burn 600, but here's the deal. You get done on that treadmill after walking, you get back home to the kitchen, and you're not any bit hungrier. You say, wow, I feel good. I walked. I moved around. I'm not starving. I'm just going to have a normal dinner. You do the exact same amount of time doing high-intensity exercises. You get home, and you eat everything and anything in the pantry, on the counter, in the refrigerator, in the freezer. That's what happens. Ladies and gentlemen, it happens. It happens. It happens. And it's probably happened to you. So, uh, yeah. If you're going to exercise while you're losing weight, I recommend low-intensity, longer interval because it's not going to create some sort of crazy hunger uh, that happens after you do high intensity exercises. I hope that helps, Gil. Go Big Red, let's uh, let's beat Colorado. How about that? Brittany, how do you feel about Walton's Farm calorie-free dressings? Well, here's the deal. I, I think if we're talking about the same thing, the Walton's Farm, uh, you know, whenever a package says calorie-free, 
but then it has real it has food ingredients that are actual foods nothing's calorie free um so i'm skeptical of it uh i would much rather just make my own dressing like that three two one dressing i recommended uh, the problem with dressings isn't the calories right a great fruit based dressing might have is going to have calories in it because it has fruit but those are great fruit calories right and it's going to have some fiber in it it's going to have water in it it's great it's great to have um the problem is when those calories are coming from fat sources like a high fat dressing made uh, with a ton of nuts or seeds or a oily dressing those are the problem so that might be an option it's not something i necessarily recommend i recommend just making a good batch of dressing uh, the three to one dressing can be made and stored for a weeks or you know two to three weeks in the refrigerator. Easily, a fruit based dressing can be stored for a week or so in the fridge. So that's more so my way about uh, going about it. I hope that helps. Uh, Marva, how long did it take you for you to lose a hundred pounds? Marva, that's a wonderful question. It took me two years to lose a hundred pounds at an average of about a pound a week. Some weeks, of course, I lost. A little bit more some weeks of course I lost a little bit less but one thing I'm very proud of is that the majority of time there was never any up five down six up seven up you know it was I lost a little bit I might have lost a little bit more I might have lost a little bit a little bit more right it's steady and continuous without those fluctuations that happen with pretty much every other diet or way of eating uh, right and I wasn't weighing myself every day because guess what you eat a pound of potatoes how much weight did you put on in weight you you gained a pound but after a day's gone by and you've processed that food you haven't you know you've you've lost weight due to the fiber and the water so uh it, i guess i'll just touch on that because that's probably a part of that more of a all right uh how much did i weigh myself i weighed myself no more frequently than once a week but regularly it was once every two weeks what does that do it creates much less stress from worrying about having a little bit more weight than you thought, you know, being, oh my gosh, I gained two pounds. Well, guess what? You ate two and a half pounds of potatoes. You're not going to keep the weight on. <laughs> all right. Um, but the longer you can go between weigh, between weighing yourself, the more chance you have of actually getting an accurate reading um, that doesn't take into account how much food you recently ate. Right. So uh, find a time of day, normally morning, uh, not to be gross, but after you've uh, passed a bowel movement is a great time, right? You, you go your, you have a morning and you go a week, same time of day ish. You pass a bowel movement, you weigh yourself. That's a pretty good idea there. You go two weeks, same thing. That is a good way to go. You go Monday morning, you weigh yourself. Tuesday morning, you weigh yourself. Wednesday morning, you weigh yourself. The only thing that's going to change is your level of sanity because you're going to go crazy. <laughs> Because your weight's going to go up, going to go down. It just has to do with the amount of food that you've eaten. Um, so take a little bit of time there. Jasmine, can you tell your vegan story? What brought you to a vegan diet? How did you first learn about it? Well, Jasmine, that's a good question. I've talked about it in the past. Uh, but I have a four-year degree in livestock production, which pretty much means that I have a piece of paper that says I am proficient in breeding, feeding, fattening, slaughtering, slicing, and serving every animal Old MacDonald ever dreamed of. Now, that's not something I'm necessarily proud of, but that is a big part of my past, and that is an expertise that I have and something that I'm able to utilize to help other people people adopt this way of eating. I'm clearly not doing any of those things now. And uh, looking back, it's not anything I would wish upon anything, anyone or something I would have done again. But that is my past. I was a college football player and I had a starting college football player for the University of Nebraska, Go Big Red, 2014 Gator Bowl champs, if you can see there. Uh, this is a great game, great game, uh, great season. But uh, and uh, everything was going great. I broke my back, uh, ballooned up. I was 100 pounds overweight. Uh, tried a bunch of different fad diets, a lot of different animal-based diets because I was, again, in my animal science classes. Uh, but luckily, after being very frustrated, I found a plant-based diet. And uh, after adopting this way of eating for health reasons, of course, I gained an ethical perspective. And now I like to say that I am a plant-based, a healthy plant-based diet eater, and I live a vegan lifestyle. So I, I eat a healthy plant-based diet and live a vegan lifestyle. Um, you know, they go hand in hand, but some choose one or the other, and, uh, you know, uh, but best of both worlds. Let's see. Uh, Sylvie, 
Sylvie, do you take a B12 supplement? I do, and uh, I think that's that is very standard among all uh, recommendations is to take a B12 supplement. Um, along along the route of uh, what, how much, and per body weight, and uh, what did I have here in a in something that's coming up here very soon? I give a recommendation, um, something that'll be coming out. Let's say before Christmas time, um, uh, but uh, maybe in print form. Uh, but, uh, you know, you can find some different recommendations. You don't need to overdo it. Your body can store a good amount of B12. It's got good supplies of it, but uh, a good regular dose of B12 in a vegan form uh, is always a good option. It's something that you should look into and take. I know Dr. Uh, Gregor talks about it, Dr. McDougall, and uh, and most of the plant-based doctors give their recommendations on it. Sylvie, not a microwave. Well, yeah, I, we don't have a microwave. We have in the past, and I'm not anti-microwave by any means. But, uh, you know, if you don't want to use them, you don't have to use them. Those who do want to use them, go ahead and use them. Um, is faro an option? June Hoyt asks. Yes, faro is a great option. Make sure it's in the whole plant, you know, the whole grain form, not in a more refined form. But if you really like it in the a little bit more refined form, you're probably going to be all right. But yeah, faro is a wonderful option. Let's see here. Gabri Gabriella, thank you so much for this. It really got me the cheating part. I've been cheating myself for a long time, but not more. Eating vegan, but lots of pastries that aren't. Yes. So hey, you know what? That there's no shame in in noticing that you've been going down the wrong path. There, there's a ton of benefit though to realizing that hey, I've got to make a change. I'm going to make it now, and the only thing that I control is the next thing that I put on my plate and what I do moving forward. So I am cheering you on one bazillion percent, Gabriella. Uh, I'm in your corner. Let me know if you have any questions or you need anything. Mary, love your energy. Well, Mary, thank you, thank you. Uh, let's see. Brittany, how often should you, should you eat meals and snacks? What time should you stop eating at night? Well, Brittany, those are some good questions. Uh, you know what? Fine. Whatever routine works, because guess what? If someone's working third shift, I'm not going to tell them that they have to eat their meals uh, at times of the day when they have to sleep, or, you know, someone's eating working second shift, or, you're, you know, in general, for the general population, breakfast would be eaten best pretty soon after you wake up, right? Uh, or, you know, at a certain, you know, in the morning, we'll say lunch in the afternoon uh, and dinner, you know, nighttime, probably not right before you go to bed. There is some benefit in eating before, you know, eating a certain amount of time before bed. But guess what? Life gets hectic. Dr. Miller, at the university late at night. I'm up doing stuff for you guys late at night. And then, you know, nine o'clock rolls around and we haven't eaten dinner. Well, guess what? We're gonna eat dinner at nine o'clock. So uh, don't don't be afraid of that. Uh, don't, you know, don't, you don't need to go to bed hungry. Uh, you can, you know, you're not gonna starve in one night. Um, but, you know, you know, reasonable times. Don't get too crazy with it. That's not the problem. The food that you are choosing to eat is what can cause a problem, but it also is the cure to the problem. It's not so much the time that you're eating it. How often should you eat? Will we eat three meals a day? Sometimes I get busy on the farm, I get busy doing something, and I'll eat two meals a day. Uh, sometimes I get hungry on the farm because I'm busy on the farm, and I'll eat four meals a day. I'll come inside and have a bowl of ice cream. I'll come inside and I'll have a bowl of oatmeal. Come inside and have a snack of rice, beans, potatoes, you know, corn, you know, quinoa. Uh, the key is when you think of a snack, I don't want you to think of cookies, candies, and cakes and fruit snacks. I want you to think of snacks as just a smaller, healthy, whole food, plant-based meal built around simple starchy staples that you're going to eat at not the three times a meal that you have your, your main, your three times a day that you have your main meals. That's all a snack is. Don't don't overcomplicate it. Just have some more rice. Have a bowl of rice. Mm -hmm. Dr. Miller's favorite snack in the world is a bowl of brown rice with some hot sauce on it. It doesn't have to be crazy. Uh, it doesn't have to be crazy to be healthy. Uh, there you go. Um, Jane, James, Jenny, must log off preparing for Dorian. A uh, Jim, Jim and Jamie. Sorry, Jim and Jamie. Uh, well, Jim and Jamie, I'm thinking about you. Hopefully, the storm passes and you guys are okay. Um, and uh, nothing too severe comes your way. Um, Stephanie Miller, who the heck are you? 
My favorite, three, two, one. I don't know who this lady is. Three, two, no, I'm just kidding. That's my mom. Love to hear it, mom. Thanks for tuning in. You're the best. And I don't have to say that, but I will. Uh, Caitlin, too many people fighting me saying plant-based won't change their chronic disease or illness. They don't realize that going plant-based could completely or mostly eradicate their health issues. I find people fighting me on diabetes all the time. They're just too selfish or too picky. Uh, think about it. Are you feeding it or fighting? Well, you know what, Caitlin? That's that's a good, really good take. Here's the deal with it. You're, you can – whether or not you like this example. You can lead a horse to water, but you sure as heck can't make it drink. Okay? Um, when it comes to people, Dr. McDougall says it best. People love to hear good things about their bad habits. And for someone eating the standard American diet, basing their diet around meat, milk, eggs, things with building their diet around things that only have a mother and a face, when you tell them that all they have to do is cut that out and start eating healthy, whole food, plant-based foods like the simple starchy staples, rice, beans, corn, potatoes, sweet potatoes, oats, quinoa, uh, they don't like to hear it. That's not good news about their bad habit. That's bad news about their bad habit. Um, and they don't want to hear it. The two things that you can do, though, are to lead by example, and I'm not saying you're not, but keep leading by example, because guess what? If you do these two things, you lead by example and you love them, then it might be tomorrow, it might be a year, it might be 10 years, but over time, when they really, really, really know that they need to make a change, and they have saw and seen the change that's happened in you, just the way, just the overall, your appearance, your well-being, how you feel, how you act, uh, they'll come ask you, hey, what were you talking about eating those plants? Uh, that's how it works. Unfortunate, you know, it's unfortunate, right? It'd be great if I could just go down the street, notice someone that I know a plant-based diet could fix, you know, slap them across the face and say, eat your potatoes. Uh, but unfortunately, that doesn't work. That'll only land you uh, a night in the slammer. <laughs> All right. Um, Sherry, I'm sitting in the ER now with my daughter. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope everything's okay. Um, I'm appalled at everything in the vending machines. Yeah, uh, you know, there are certain places where certain medical professionals are preside and work out of that make their money and their living out of, and there's, you know, it's not like this, it's, it's just, hey, guess what? There's McDonald's in uh, most major hospitals. There's a Wendy's in major hospitals. There's an Arby's in major hospitals. Um, it is what it is. Hospitals make money off of sick people, and uh, they want to make sure that supply is right in there. It's maybe a little more complicated than that. Sure, you can probably make an excuse for it, but yeah, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate to see McDonald's in a hospital, and it's unfortunate to see junk food in a hospital vending machine. I understand what you're saying there. Any, what are healthy snacks to eat to help you lose weight? And now many snacks should you, how many snacks should you eat during the day? Hey, again, the healthiest snacks are just smaller amounts of the foods you would eat during your morning meals. Rice, beans, potatoes, sweet potatoes, oat, corn, quinoa. You can have a bowl of fruit as a snack. You can have a salad as a snack. Uh, steamy, you can have non-starchy vegetables. You know, the things you need to stay away from are the cookies, cakes, pastries, uh, fruit snacks, processed junk, and then what a lot of people like to go for are the things, the exact opposite things you should go for. Don't go snacking on nuts, seeds, avocados. Those are not what you should be snacking on. Your snacks should be the same foods that you're eating as your main meals. Of course, you can change it up. I'm not telling you to eat rice and beans with salsa, three meals a day, two snacks a day for the rest of your life. I'm just saying base those snacks around the healthy whole plant foods, the same foods that you're eating uh, to lose weight during those three meals a day. I hope that helps. Uh, of course, you can, you know, you can change them up and do fun things. You know, we've got an air fryer now. Some fun thing I like to do is take cooked chickpeas and toss them, you know, dry them off a little bit and then top, put them on the air fryer basket and just crisp them up. You know, they're a fun, crunchy snack. You know, it's the same stuff. You can always prepare it differently, uh, but, uh, but it's the same stuff. That's the key. It's the same stuff. Caitlin, I had asked earlier if frozen veg is better than canned, even if I'm purchasing the no salt added varieties, the quantity, the quality of frozen beans versus canned look different. Is this because freezing locks more nutrients than canning? I love buying canned chickpeas for the aquafaba. Well, first of all, Caitlin, if you love aquafaba, you get the exact same aquafaba if you just cook chickpeas in the instant pot on the stove top um, in a pressure cooker in a slow cooker, things like that. So aquafaba is not some magical thing you get out of canned beans. You can get it by just by cooking beans. 
Um, here's my take on canned veg and frozen veg. I enjoy frozen veg better. Canned beans can be a great option, but we're talking about green beans, corn. Those are really the ones that I think of. I, you know, there's probably more. Uh, I much prefer frozen due to the fact that I do know that frozen, they're taking something perfectly ready from the field, blanching and flash freezing right away, and it has not changed at all since they did that, and you take it in the freezer to your home and cook it up. Canning, they're cooking it. You know, it might not be in primo shape. You know, there's a lot of things there. No salt added. Yeah, if if it's if it's all you can do, it's all you can do. But I prefer frozen. I just prefer frozen or fresh. You know, fresh is great too. <laughs> I don't want to just say fresh. You know, fresh is great too. Kelly, what do you think of Bragg's amino liquids? Hey, if you need a little bit of salt to you know to make that potato, that rice, that corn, that quinoa, those oats, probably not the oats. Uh, just a little bit more palatable, uh, you know, just to start enjoying them a little more. Toss it on there. If you need a little bit of salt, put a little salt on there. It's not going to hurt. I like coconut aminos. I'm not a huge Bragg's liquid aminos, not because I hate them, just because I prefer the coconut aminos. I'm more of a sweet and salty person. I think the coconut aminos have a little bit of sweetness to them, so I like it. Um, Steven, how much of your – D1 athlete mentality to attribute to sticking with this lifestyle change? Uh, probably none. Uh, how much do I attribute my elite D1 athlete mentality to promoting and helping others? A lot. Because I've taken that drive that I had for that in helping others experience the same benefits that I have. Me personally, uh, you don't need any drive. I mean, you, you, it helps. Of course it helps. I'm not going to say it doesn't help. But you don't need to be an elite athlete with a ton of drive and a ton of uh, self, you know, you don't need that to eat potatoes and rice and beans. Uh, we eat it by diet, again, and I, I don't want to oversimplify this, Steve, but I just, you know, just to be honest, um, I know many people that would never, that don't have the, the willpower or the perseverance that could never be a Division One athlete, but they can, they can cook beans and potatoes and rice and eat the simple starchy staples with some fruits and vegetables added in, and they can do that for the next 50 years, and they've done it for the past 50 years or 40 years or 30 years or 20 years without any problem, and they've done it without any, uh, you know, drive or, you know, willpower. It's just, it's very simple. Once you understand how simple and easy it is to cook, prepare, and eat a healthy whole food plant-based diet that's built around the simple starchy staples, you realize that you never want to go back to any other way of eating because it's more complicated, it's more costly, it costs way more in the grocery store to buy anything compared to beans, rice, oats, potatoes, and sweet potatoes, uh, and it's just less, you know, it's not as healthy, clearly. So, yeah, it's, uh, the mentality has helped me in helping others, but not so much helped me in helping me, I would say. Uh, the opposite, the, the fact that I enjoy also being laid back and making things simple and a more lazy, uh, you know, lazy is not the right term, but uh, a more lazy way of eating and living uh, is perfect. You cook rice, you cook beans, you cook potatoes, uh, and you eat them. Yeah, it's simple, simple, simple. Uh, let's see. Guinea or Ginny? Either one. Been follow I mean, I respect whatever one it is, but I'm not sure how to pronounce that is what I'm saying. Uh, been following Whole Food Plant Based for a couple years, lost weight the healthy way, now incorporating exercising and see good toning and muscles. That's perfect. Yeah, you know, one thing about a whole food plant-based diet that's wonderful is that, and some people get frustrated a little bit, is because you don't lose 30 pounds in 20 days, right? You could, and some people do, but the majority of people are going to lose weight slowly and steadily over time at a healthy rate. What does that mean? Well, what that means is you're not going to hemorrhage your muscle. Your body is not going to just throw out everything. You're slowly losing your body fat while still maintaining that muscle mass that you have while you're getting down to your perfect body weight reaching homeostasis. So what that means is that once you do reach your healthy body weight, you don't have to go back to the gym to build up muscle that you might have lost or you don't have to do all, you know, it's, you know, it's, you, you get down to a healthy body weight and if you work out again, oh great, if you don't, you don't. But if you want to tone up, if you want to have a little bit of muscle, you know, who doesn't enjoy a little bit of bicep or a little bit of tricep, a little bit of pec, a little bit of, you know, whatever. Um, I know Bubbles and Bella, they, they, uh, they enjoy having their triceps and biceps. But, uh, you know, yeah, toning up's pretty easy and 
you know, it's funny. I get asked all the time, and if you have questions about it, feel free to ask. I'm not telling you, but, but I get asked all the time. Well, what are you eating to put on muscle? I see your, you know, I see you got muscle. What do you eat? What do, you know? What, what you know? Hey, I'm doing four, three, four, five days a week of low intensity resistance strength training. So you know, just some simple strength training, mostly machines because it has the least chance of injury of any other exercise that you could do, uh, and I'm a low fat, low protein, high carbohydrate, plant based diet. It's very simple. I'm eating a diet built around simple starchy staples. This, here's the great thing, everybody. I have not changed my diet at all. I eat the exact same things that I did while I was losing 100 pounds. I eat the exact same things as I've kept it off. I eat the exact same things, and I, I've gained muscle and put on muscle mass. I eat the exact same things. And my weight stayed pretty, cons you know, after I lost 100 pounds, my weight stayed pretty consistent. Well, my muscle has gone up, right? Fat's gone down a little bit. I put on some muscle. You know, it, it, don't overcomplicate it. Don't overcomplicate it. I love to hear that, though. Uh, keep up the good work. Keep toning up. I'm glad to hear you lost the weight. Sounds like you're doing awesome. Uh, Gail, so very helpful. This answers so many of the questions I've had, particularly with sabotage, bread, nuts, seeds, and exercise. Great advice. I'm so in on whole food plant-based. Hey, I'm cheering you on, Gil. Just like I know you're going to be cheering on those Huskers this year. Keep up the good work, buddy. Marley, great tip space, Marley. I appreciate it. If you have, you know, if you want to see what it's like to eat out of the produce section challenge and eat healthy whole plant foods as close to their natural state as possible, and you want to see someone who's embodying a healthy whole food plant-based diet, who's literally on camera cooking every single day. You know, he's not hiding anything. Uh, go check Marley Ficalor out, the Produce Section Challenge. You won't be disappointed. Um, Sophie, what about purely resistance workout? I'm guessing, Sophie, you're talking about for losing weight using resistance strength training. Um, <clears throat> the same thing would be I would not recommend high-intensity resistance strength training. That means, like, a, you know, super high reps where you're just, you know, going crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, I would not recommend that. And I wouldn't also recommend going like super high weight where you're, you know, because you're going to get home, you're going to be tired, you're going to be hungry. Uh, if you're going to do some resistance training, I would recommend light resist, low intensity, low rep, or moderate intensity, moderate rep resistance strength training as you're losing weight. Uh, it's going to help you tone up a little bit. But here's something that people kind of notice is um, as you're losing, you know, it's not, that's not necessarily going to exacerbate uh, your weight loss is not necessarily going to halter your weight, you know, stop your weight loss. Um, but hey, if you like working out, you keep it up. My main thing is when it comes to the hot, you know, the running, the jogging, the elliptical that people think you have to do. New Year's resolution: I'm gonna get in the gym and we're gonna lose weight. No, you're not. You're gonna get in the gym and work out hard, and then work out even harder in the kitchen as you eat twice as many calories as you burn, buddy. Um, that's what happens. So uh, that's my big thing is people starting. If you're already a runner, if you're already someone who likes to work out and you're wanting to lose weight, don't stop. I'm not telling you to stop because you already know what that normal feels like. You already know, you know what you're, you know, you already know that. You could, you could stop or you could lower the intensity. That's always fine. Um, but in in the idea of if you're, yeah, if you're already working out, strength training, your strength training machines or weights, uh, you can keep it up. It's not gonna, you know, that's it's it's when you. If you want to start losing weight, you can't outwork your mouth. You do it all with this right here, with this top two teeth, these bottom teeth, uh, this tongue, this throat, this stomach. That's how you're going to lose the weight. It's not going to happen by the gym next door, the bike, the elliptical, the treadmill. That's not how it's going to happen. Uh, it can help, but it's not going to happen just through that. So, of course, yeah, do some resistance strength training if you want. What is the three, two, one dressing? Emerson is asking. All right, Emerson. Sorry, I'm just checking here. Uh, we we'll have to go through some of these questions pretty quickly, everyone. If you don't answer all of them, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I'll go back and try to answer them myself, just typing. Uh, or if they're, you know, if there's something that I think a lot of people are asking, we'll cover it in another one. Just like Eileen, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, she was asking for this video, so we made sure it happened. Um, three, two, one dressing. Type into Google. Two one Esselstyn dressing because I'm not 100% sure which one's three, which one's two, which one's one. I think it's three balsamic, two mustard, one maple syrup. You'll correct me if I'm wrong. You can do it in tablespoon, teaspoon, or tablespoon, teaspoon, tablespoon. Uh, 
you know, just, you know, three parts, two parts, one part. Um, let's see here. Caitlin, what do you say about keto? I have a family member on keto for over a year, I believe, in, uh, and says he wants to stay on it forever. I'm afraid it will really hurt him. What can I say? Uh, he says he mixes up intermittent fasting with keto and carnivore diet. Well, again, you're not going to, you can lead a you know, horse to water, but you're not going to get him to drink. It, keto can produce short term results, but unfortunately has long term consequences. The great thing about a plant based diet is it may have a little bit slower short term results, but those short term results long term result in healthy outcomes uh, instead of unhealthy outcomes. So, uh, what can you say? You know, Dr. Greger, Dr. Campbell, Dr. McDougall. Dr. Esselstyn uh, have all put things about the, you know, you're not, again, you're not going to change anybody's point of view. Um, but when that person, uh, he, when he, uh, you know, experiences what everybody else experiences long term with it is that it's unsustainable and the weight starts coming back on or a chronic disease starts to set in. Unfortunately, I'm not wishing this on anybody, but guess what? Uh, you walk the walk. You're gonna, you know, you know, you talk the talk, and you you start walking the walk with something like that. Uh, you're gonna deal with the deal with the consequences of it. Um, yeah, you can find different things that the doctor said. Basically, you know, why would you why would you give up long term health for a few short term? You know, what, why? Pretty much everybody in the standard American medical system, right? We we take pills and potions and uh, for short term benefit benefit. Uh, only to lead us to long-term harm. So he's not un, you know, uncommon. Uh, it's very common. And the big thing is lead by example. You keep loving them. You keep showing them this is the good way to go about eating. And when that problem comes up, uh, whether that's uh, you know pre-diabetes, type two diabetes, you know whatever happens, you can be the first person to say, or you'll be the first person that he comes to and says, hey. You know what? I know you've done this for a long time. You've seen you've seen the benefits uh, of a plant-based diet. Help me out. That's what I would recommend. It's only a matter of time. I don't know how much time, uh, and hopefully it happens. Um, you know, the sad thing is, I think the stat is 40%. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's 40% of first-time heart attacks end in death. Even if it was 10%, which it's not, it's way more than that, but even if it was 10% of heart attacks end in death, but 40% of heart attacks end in death, right? First-time heart attacks. It happens. And you think, oh no, maybe I should eat more vegetables. Gone. I hope that's not what's going to happen. You know, I'm not wishing that on anybody, uh, but that's a matter of the fact. Uh, the quicker and sooner you adopt a whole food plant based diet, the quicker and sooner you can lead and love others to a healthy whole food plant based diet, the better chance they have of reversing chronic disease and staying away from it forever. Forever. All right. Uh, Brittany, how do you feel about plant based probiotics? Nah, eh, don't worry about it. You, you know, no, I don't. I don't have a feeling for them. I don't use them. I don't recommend them. Uh, you, you're, you know, the prebiotics and the probiotics that your body is going to be getting from those whole plant foods that you're eating, those fiber, resistance fiber, the starches, is it's, it's, it's what the body's lived and thrived off of for thousands of years without um, a corporation or company making a million bucks off of selling it. So uh, that's what I would recommend. Uh, Cindy, I love your simplicity with diet and recipes. Thank you, Cindy. Simple and easy. That's my big thing. Mm. Uh, Katrina, I adore the fact that you tell people the truth about how horrible animal agriculture really is. There is no such thing as humane slaughter. Yeah, I, you know, those are all, it's, it's sad, it's unfortunate. Um, and the only, you know, the two biggest things, the way, if you want to change the world around you, you want to change the people around you, you've got to lead by example, show them how healthy and how great you feel and how the weight's fallen off on a healthy whole food plant-based vegan diet and then just love them and those are the, those are the two ways i hope that helps um jennifer i got on this because of dealing with lupus and fibro since my mid-20s now in my mid-40s my body is just devastated by the lupus and because i'm on this with my doctor's approval i wish i had heard uh jennifer i would recommend if you're a lupus patient i would recommend checking out a couple things um number one i'd recommend checking out just typing in or looking up lupus, Dr. McDougall, or uh, look up autoimmune disease, Dr. McDougall. He's got some great information out there uh, and some great resources. Also, Brooke Goldner. Dr. Brooke Goldner is a good resource for those with lupus. Now, we would disagree on a few things like the 
the need for smoothies and green smoothies, uh, I would say that you get to, you know, they might, they might, it might be a benefit, but I think uh, I think we'll all agree that the bulk of the benefit and where you're going to get the major improvement is going to be from building your diet around the simple starchy staples and then adding in the fruits and vegetables, keeping it as simple as possible, um, and uh, you're going to do your body good. You're going to do the body good. So I would recommend those two resources out, Jennifer. <clears throat> Sherry, at least I can, you can get a – yeah, there's some great fast food places that serve whole plant foods. You know, you're going to pay – 50 times for what more than you could get them at home. But yeah, if you're out and you're in a pinch, there's some good options out there. Um, uh, Emerson, I love fried portobello mushrooms cooked in grapeseed oil. What's your mindset on the vegan mock meats? All right, Emerson, today we're talking about calorie density. Oil is 4,000 calories per pound. It's the most calorie dense food, the highest fat food that you could consume on the planet. And it is pretty much a poison to the body. I don't recommend using oil of any kind. Some studies have gone out. Some research has been done on the different oils, right? Healthy, healthy oils, grapeseed oil, olive oil, coconut oil, compared to corn oils and uh, mixed vegetable oils. And, and guess what? They all react the exact same in your body. Uh, they're just not healthy. So oil, cut it out. Uh, what's my mindset on vegan mock meats? Most of them are made using uh, isolated protein or protein isolates, which are not healthy. They're very hard on the body and the organs. Uh, and then uh, they're full of oil. So again, the, so my mindset on them is, is they, they, I wouldn't eat them and I, and I wouldn't build my diet around them. Now, if you're going to go out for a celebratory meal to a, a local vegan restaurant once a month or once, you know, a couple times a year, then that's, you're not, you know, you're, you're not going to, that's not going to, to do you in. Uh, so that's the thing. But if we're talking about on a daily basis, adding foods in as a staple of your diet, no, those two things do not jive. Um, let's see. I'm sorry if I'm not asking everyone. Rose, do you have or use an Instant Pot? Yes, we have a six-quart uh, Instant Pot Duo. We use it two or three times a day probably. We love it a lot. Um, I'm glad to hear you're using it. Um, all right, everybody, let's answer two more questions. Hey, uh, Tatjana, hey, yeah, uh, I've been vegan for three years and have gained rather than lost weight. I'm starting and getting back into the gym now, doing intermittent fasting, cutting out sugar, and trying to get rid of it, carbohydrates. Any tips? Sorry, Tatjana. Yes, uh, a vegan diet is not a diet that is built for losing weight. Contrary to many people's beliefs, a vegan diet's not going to, you're not going to lose weight just eating a vegan diet. You are going to lose weight eating a healthy whole food plant-based diet that is vegan. I tell people I eat a healthy whole food plant-based diet and I live a vegan lifestyle, right? I do no harm and that includes to my body. So, so yes, a vegan diet can be – is uh, a vegan diet is healthy, uh, right? It's healthier. But if we're talking about losing weight, we're talking about reaching our maximum potential when it comes to weight loss. We're really going to be looking at – Building a diet around simple starchy staples. Now, if you just tuned in, I want you to go back and either start from the start because we're talking about calorie density, or I want you to go to some more of my videos that talk about uh, not losing weight on a whole food plant-based diet or getting started on a healthy vegan or whole food plant-based diet. Those are great resources that I would really recommend. But here's the deal. We're going to build our diet. I don't want you to worry about, yeah, you can cut out the processed sugars and, uh, you know, you talk about empty carbs, but that's not really a food. That's not really a food group. Here's what we're going to build our diet around. The best and easiest way to lose weight and really live long-term healthy is to eat a high-carbohydrate, low-fat, oil-free, plant-based diet, one that's moderate and low in protein. And that pretty much just means that you're eating a diet built around the three S's, the simple starchy staples. Those are rice, beans, corn, potatoes, sweet potatoes, oats, and quinoa. Now, there's more simple starches, but these are basically just the foods that populations and civilizations of millions and millions of people have eaten and thrived off of living long, healthy lives for thousands of years. That's sweet potatoes. That could be rice, uh, quinoa, oats, maize, or corn. Uh, but those are the foods. And then we're going to add in things like non-starchy vegetables, which include green leafy vegetables, kale, collards, chard, arugula, salad, lettuce mix, um, and then also things like green beans, uh, broccoli, Brussels, uh, and then having some fruit in there too. So those are the foods. But we are going to stick away. We're going to cut out all the oil. 
We're going to cut out all the animal products, which is not a problem for you because you say you've been digging for three years. We're going to cut out the oil, cut out the animal products. We're going to focus on the simple starchy staples, some non-starchy vegetables, and some fruit. And that is that is the big thing. Don't worry about the, you know, you can do intermittent fasting, but that's not where it's at. It's the food. The food, the food, the food is where you're going to get that benefit. Um, and that is where I would recommend starting and ending. I wouldn't get too too crazy about anything else there. Emerson, I hope that helped, man. I, I really do. Um, it's, you know, celebratory food is one thing, but building your diet around something, stay away from the fake vegan meats and stay away from the oil. You're going to reach your best benefit there. Uh, all right, last question. Um, if you have any more questions, ask them, and I'll go back and I'll go back and uh, you know comment through. But last one I'm going to answer because I got to get going. We've got uh, my mother and father-in-law in town, uh, Dr. Miller's parents, and uh, we're having a great weekend. But uh, we've got some plans tonight. And oh, don't leave yet because Bubbles and Bella will say goodbye. I'll make sure that happens. I guarantee it. All right, last question. The honor goes to Kathy. Kathy says, "My 17-year-old son is an elite footballer." Now. In America, I would assume that is plays American football, but it could also mean football or would be soccer. Either way, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um, an elite footballer and just went plant based. He wants to trim down and rip up without losing energy and strength. He lost a few pounds, got a few gains, and his body is chasing, changing. Any advice for him while getting in front of scouts? You actually convinced him to start the program. Thank you. Kathy, you want to put a smile on this guy's face? Tell me that a young guy or gal is eating a plant-based diet because I can help lead by example. Wow. Wow. What a question to end with. Uh, Kathy, shoot me a message or something. I, you know, I, I can always, I, I'd love to give some specific advice if you have questions about specific advice. Um, but in general, for everybody watching, man, I, I wish this would have been an earlier question. Um, but we're answering it now. We're answering it now, Kathy. Here we go. When it comes to a plant-based diet for your son, an elite football player, 17-year-old, I'm guessing a junior in high school, possibly maybe starting his senior year, uh, here it goes. We're eating the exact same thing. Everybody, you know, everybody on the outside and, and some social media gurus who aren't doctors, right? I'm not a doctor, but uh, I would say that I'm pretty much in line with the, the plant pioneers here. Uh, they're going to tell you, eat protein. You got to eat your protein, protein powder, protein. You know, same thing I did, right? And all it did was made me fat and slow and, you know, upset my stomach and made me feel like crap. Uh, here is the, the real advice. Here's the real truth about being a 17-year-old plant-based athlete. You're going to build your diet around the simple starchy staples. And I, I work with different young plant-based athletes, a little bit older plant-based athletes, high school, college age. Um, even some professional. Uh, here we go. It is, you're going to build your diet around the simple starchy staples. Now the key, the key, key, key here, Kathy, and your, for your son is to make sure he's eating enough calories because you did say he wants to trim down, but you also said he wants to, he wants to rip up, which means add a little bit of muscle. I like it. I like it. Um, but also wants to you know, keep the energy up. So, I'm more worried about for a high level athlete, we're talking about a high level athlete, we're not gonna, you know, who's already, ex, you know, you're extending a lot of energy. And for most high level athletes, you know, sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call for my mom. I wonder if she has a question here. Um, mom, if you're watching, don't call me on my live streams. Come on, what the heck? Um, but here we go. Uh, the, you're, the burning the calories is not the problem. So I'm not worried about trimming up. I'm more worried about, you know, you want to you want to keep on that muscle mass, and you want to keep the energy up. So all it means is you're going to eat a calorie sufficient diet. You have to eat enough calories. Now, where are you going to get those calories to not only help you you know, trim up a little bit, which for a for an elite athlete it's not a problem. You get on this way of eating, you're an elite athlete. You're exuding a lot of energy. You know, it's just, it's it's easy. It's great. To eat. Um, easy stuff. But here we go. You're going to eat enough calories. A calorie sufficient diet. If that means your seven, you know, if your son is say, we'll just say he's, you know, really high level in season, in practice, high level, burning, you know, he probably needs 2,500, 3,000 calories a day. 
Where are you going to get those? We're not going to get them from isolated proteins. We're not going to get them from nuts, seeds, avocado. You know, we're going to get them from whole plant foods. We're going to get them from rice, beans, corn, potatoes, sweet potato, oats, quinoa. Okay, those simple starchy staples because those are the high car carbohydrate, high fiber foods that are high energy but low fat so that they're going to be perfect for trimming down, you know, for building up some muscle and uh, keeping the energy up. So that's where the base of the diet is. A nice big bowl of oatmeal with some fruit, maybe some maple syrup in the morning. It's going to be a great breakfast option. Lunch, take your lunch, take your lunch to school and maybe eat two lunches, uh, two lunches worth because guess what? You got practice coming up and practice, you got to, you know, whether or not you're eating plant-based practice is, you know, that's one thing about plant-based diet that everybody is the recovery and just how good you feel practicing and training is so much better. I hope he's experiencing it and he will experience it if he keeps it up. Um, but have a big lunch, you know, not so much that you're going to be sick at practice, but you know, have, have a couple sweet potatoes, have some baked beans, have some cooked black beans, some salsa on there, fill up on those high carbohydrates, those simple starchy staples. That's where the bulk of those calories are going to be. Have, have a, you know, have some greens in there if you want, um, but the real benefit is going to be coming from those simple starchy staples. After practice, you know, practice is a tough practice. We're going to get home and I'm going to have a quick meal of, you know, or maybe I'm going to have something that I can eat right after practice. I got my locker up here, pop it down. I've got a, I've got a baked sweet potato, a cold baked sweet potato, pop. I'm eating that right away after practice. I'm just getting some calories in me after burning up after practice. I'm going to go home. I'm going to have a nice big dinner, maybe some brown rice with a little chickpea curry on it, uh, or maybe just some brown rice and some salsa or some black beans. You keep it as, you know, you know me, keep it as simple as you want. Uh, but bulk up on those simple starchy staples because you're, you, the great thing is you're not going to overeat them, especially if you're a high-level athlete. You're not going to overeat them. Uh, but what you will do is you can make sure that you're going to eat the, you know, you're going to eat a sufficient amount of calories. Now, here's one thing I would not recommend. You're going to hear it: eat beans, eat beans, protein, protein. Don't overeat on the beans. Maybe a cup a day. Don't overeat on the beans because that is going to cause bloating. That is going to potentially cause some problems. So. Keep the beans to a minimum as he's working his way up on this plant-based way of eating, but stick to those simple starchy staples, those rice, corn, quinoa, oats, potatoes, sweet potatoes, those type of foods. Now, as a, as a high-level athlete, of course he can have some nuts, seeds, avocados. He's burning a lot of calories. Are you going to make it a bulk of your meal? Are you going to eat them as snacks? I wouldn't recommend it. I really wouldn't. Unless, unless, Kathy, he's starting, you know, if, if, now, now here's the here's the preface. If he's eating 3,000 calories of those whole plant foods, the you know the simple starchy staples, some rice, some or some some fruit, some vegetables, um, and he's still you know maybe losing too much weight in the coat, you know then you may add some nuts, seeds, avocados in there. Probably it shouldn't happen. He's not going to need to do that. Uh, it's not that hard if you're burning, you know if you're going through your day burning 3,000 calories having a a hard practice, it's not hard throughout the following day or throughout that day to, to eat 3,000 calories, right? That's kind of the, the reason that I recommend people uh, with the main goal of losing weight stay away from uh, high intensity exercise is because of how easy it becomes to eat, overeat, you know, 1,200, 1,500 calories after that high intensity workout. So I have no worry that, that he's going to lose too much weight. That's not a worry at all. Now, if he was a 315-pound offensive lineman who's six foot five, he's and, and he was losing a lot of weight and scouts were noticing, that's a different story. We're going to probably have to add in some of those higher, you know, higher fat foods just to keep that fat on him, right? But if he wants to trim down, be a quick, agile, active footballer then yeah, the, the, those foods are great. Now some more higher, you know, here's, here's a great thing to get in a little bit more calories that are still high carbohydrate, low fat, whole food plant-based. Go for those pasta and the breads, right? Have a good sandwich, have pasta at lunch. Pasta is a great thing. You can get a lot in, a lot of good, you know, high carbohydrate calories, and that's going to be good energy, and it's not going to, it's going to fill them up without filling him out, right? That's the goal. Fill up without filling out. It's going to be a good amount of fiber in there. Um, so that helps. So a good amount of pasta, all the simple starchy staples, some fruit, some veg. He's going to be fine. I'm excited. I'm so excited. Shoot me a message with any more uh, specific um, questions. But, man, I'm super stoked, super stoked there about that. Yeah, so so soccer, so footballer, but soccer is what we're talking about. So, yeah, 
trimming down, getting faster, quicker recovery time, leaner, more muscular, super easy, super simple on a plant-based diet. He's burning a ton of calories throughout the day. Make it happen. Make it happen there. Um, let's see here. All right, one more question just because Steve asked here. High-carb foods cause my diabetes to spike very high. I did a whole food plant-based diet for 1.5 years, and it never corrected itself. Now a vegan, but watch high-carb starchy foods. I guess I'm the odd out. All right, Steve, here's the thing. I, uh, I'm guessing you have type 2 diabetes. If you have type 1, we can have another conversation, but type 2 diabetes, um, have you cut, and, I, and I'm not, I don't want to assume anything, have you cut out the oil, have you cut out the nut seeds, avocados, the processed foods? If you're basing your diet around simple starchy staples with non-starchy vegetables like green leafies in there and fruit, um, then we're, we're, we're going to have a different conversation. I would really recommend you, you check out Dr. Esselstyn, check out Dr. McDougall's talks about it, uh, check out all the information you can because it is, it is curable. Uh, you're not the odd one out. I want you, I want you to know that, you know, this is definitely for you. It's definitely for, um, for everyone. We, you know, this is, uh, this is great. Emerson asked, will this video be available for replay? Of course it will. 100%. I will, uh, this will be up on my Facebook page as soon as it down, as soon as we're kind of finished, it takes about five minutes to be uploaded. And then I'm also going to download and post to my YouTube channel. So I hope that helps. I hope that helps everybody. Love ya. I did promise. I did promise. Come here. All right. Oh. Bella, say goodbye to the camera. Bye, everybody. All right, Belle. You got any parting words? Eat your simple starchy staples. All right. Well, thanks, Bella. We, we will eat our simple starchy staples. Uh, let's see. All right, Bubbles. Oh. All right. Hey, what you, you're, you're looking like I just woke you up, which I did. Uh, you got any parting words for us, Bubbles? No oil. Cut it all out. No oil. No oil. Eat your simple starchy staples. Thank you, Bubbles. What a wonderful way to end our live stream. Bubbles looks like she's having a panic attack, but this is just what she looks like when she's tired. Um, all right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Again, this will be uploaded on the Facebook page. Um, love you. Hope you have a wonderful day. Happy Labor Day, everybody. Uh, rest. Dogs are knocking stuff over. Uh, rest up. Have a good rest. Uh, have a good extended weekend. Eat your simple starchy staples. Uh, stay blessed. Remember, you got to love. You got to lead by example. That's the only way you're going to change the people around you, change the world around you. Keep up the good work, everybody. Uh, I'll be around for questions and comments and everything. So we will talk soon. Bye-bye.